I have a job, so. Well, howdy there, everybody. Welcome to Manorama. Everything might look a little bit different because, uh, well, uh, we had to move everything to StreamYards, and we lost um, some stuff. So there's no intro, outro, none of that stuff. We're going old school, baby. <laughs> I don't know. I was like, I got to come up with an intro. But thank you for everyone who's tuning in on Rumble and tuning in on YouTube. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, uh, let's dig into it. A dance uh, in the opening thing, no? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, please don't dance. <laughs> no, you can dance uh, if you want to. You can leave your <laughs> and behind. You can do it. You can do it. Oh man, yeah, that's oh, my man. head. Damn it. <laughs> I know, right? Um, let's see if we're rolling on Rumble here, everybody. Yeah, I'm waiting for the rumble. I've got them on here checking. Uh, you're on you YouTube, are. that's for sure, yeah. So. Hey, what the hell? I wasn't subscribed on your channel, Steve. What? Oh, I what am you? now. Hmm? Your YouTube channel. Either that or what? I got unsubbed. Well, I am now. What? Say what? Uh, hey, we're on? good on rumble, and i'm just checking things see that's why you have to have two phones you can actually monetize every monetize yeah. i'm not even monetized. What are you saying? okay cool we're good we are good on both platforms uh, there. Perfect. anyways so let's get into it shall we guys um uh, rod it's been a while since you've been here i'm glad that you are here um, Thanks. how's your week been oh it's been pretty good doing some <clears throat> doing some work here and there but i mean like the biggest thing is i've actually been really pouring myself into my book i made three uh authors uh three submission uh three book query submissions to my uh, for my two literary agents uh today Ooh. And, yeah i have a little bit of time off from work so like i'm like i'm like i'm like hey i'm i'm happy with that you know what i mean like you know oh well hey. it really actually is well see uh, uh, the radiator at my truck, uh, in my work truck, is like, has been. They, they've actually replaced it. This is now the third time they've replaced it. So now they have to. Oh, my truck's kind of in the breakdown area. So I'm like, oh, okay, fine, a few days off, I'm sure. But then I took advantage of it, and I'm thinking, you know what? Fine, fuck it. I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna work. Oh, I've been pouring myself <clears> into my book and my second book, and trying to. Uh, uh, I sent uh, three author literary subs uh, uh, queries out today. Now I don't I don't expect to get answered for probably at least a month. You know, maybe probably three, but it's a start. You know, and I mean, at least I got the ball rolling. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> yeah. And I don't know. I've been doing uh, doing uh, you know keep myself in, in nice and trim and uh, getting ready for my uh, return to the ring and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know and um uh, it's nice having somebody that you're seeing you know i mean i'm that's it. i mean anybody's seen me on uh on twitter x i'm uh, um you know i'm kind of seeing lisa uh, yeah. she must she must she must really like me being as we've gone to wrestling three times you know i mean she must like me so <laughs> but there you, you go know, yeah but, uh, uh, you know, but the other thing, too, though, is the, the other thing that just comes down to this kind of, oh, it costs money. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yep. Oh. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you. That's Sorry, fantastic. I'm glad that. No worries. I'm glad that you're doing good. Um, sounds like you're going on a, a few dates. Yeah. If she's like, I'm, if she goes on three, because the three wrestling matches with you, I mean, that's you're doing pretty good. That's like me if I was dating and took the girl to a rodeo and she lives in LA and she goes, I'll go to three of them. I'm like, all right, cool, you're good. Uh, Jeff, how, how's your week been? <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> from about March 16th, it's been shit. Am I allowed to say that here? Yeah, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, 
you know, just when you think, you know, last week I had to bail because I had to, I ended up in the emergency room helping out someone else and everything was doing good. I had four days off from work, woke up Sunday morning. And, you know, the worst part about getting old when you apparently you sneeze really, really loudly or forcefully, you can break blood vessels in your eyeball. Yes. Point your back out. Yeah. What? So after I'm like back out doing sneezing. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've been dealing with my left eye full of um blood since Sunday. And I, I gotta admit it's it's not a fun, fun little experience and really makes you tired. That's been I think the biggest surprise for me is how tired it makes you do just because I do so much computer work. No. But otherwise I'm doing good. Thanks for uh, having me on the night. Yeah. Well, I, I I I hope you get a quick recovery and yeah, yeah, they're saying seven to ten days it should clear up. All right. Well, I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you're you're doing better. And I was hoping for a most mainly beard panel, but Canadian Spider Man decided to drop in. Oh, I'm sure okay. he has I a love... beard hidden somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh please, no, 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 no. Oh, God. We're on YouTube also there, Canadian Spider Man. Oh God! Just please, 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 <laughs> sit down. There you go. Oh God! Uh, and we're banned Hi, from mom. everything else. That's it. Oh, uh, Tom, how how's your week been? <laughs> You're muted. Yeah, I think somebody. Oh, muted. there we go. Anyway, yeah, no, yeah. Jeff, but the the blood and the eye thing, I being diabetic, I actually have it constantly. I gotta get needles eight every eight weeks. It sucks. It makes everything blurry and it's just a pain. So I get it there. Well, and may I ask Rod, are you you said you're coming back to the ring? Are you a wrestler? Used to be. Yeah, I'm retired. Where, I got where did, may I ask where you trained? Yeah, with uh, Teddy Hart. And um uh, um uh, could say the dungeon, which I kind of did for a while, but like Honestly, most of it was with uh, Teddy Hart. And see, Teddy Hart, uh, his dad is actually a heart through his dad, not his, or sorry, his mom, not his dad. Yeah, he's uh, Teddy, because, Teddy in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, uh, his dad owned uh, owned a gym, uh, BJ's Gym downtown. It was a long, well known hangout for wrestlers. And cheers, BJ Clay. Had, I'm cheers, and yeah, yeah, although you can't see me. Yeah, uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, no. anyway, BJ had a wrestling ring upstairs, and um, Teddy learned, uh, well, fly really in it, and yeah, yeah. Uh, that's where he learned uh, learned uh, learned to be a pro wrestler. And I met him one night in uh, Edmonton, and then I said I was just very happy to to meet one of the honored to meet one of the hearts, and he said, "Oh, thank you," you know. And then uh, and then the first thing out of his mouth was. Uh, you ever thought about being a wrestler? Which is funny because I mean, I, I trained. First of all, I trained like six six years earlier, uh, or mm -hmm. sorry, four years earlier to uh, 1994 um, in Rocky Mountain Wrestling. But then that promotion folded. Then it's just kind of like, well, promotion folds. Unless you know somebody, somebody <laughs> somewhere else. Yeah. Forget it. So I'm like, yeah. Anyways, that's yeah. how I met Ted, and I started training with him in 2000. No reason I asked Corey Stephen and me to take over and stuff. I was just gonna say I I got to train in '99 at the Heart Camp. I got to meet Stu Restum. He was sadly he was on his breather by then, but Helen and Stu were still alive at the time. They took me in. I slept on the dungeon in the basement. I got a picture of me with the hole in the ceiling. They always said, "Where was that from?" I guess nice. Andre. Andre created that hole in the ceiling. He pressed somebody over <laughs> his head, put them through it, and he said, "Yep," and it, they never fixed it. But yeah, and then uh, but I got to meet Stu. Sat down, talked with him. And oh, I can tell you stories, but yeah, I never competed. I ended up booking for a local company here, XWA, and I was a photographer for them for a while. But yeah, no, that's just cool. That's cool. So, oh, but yeah, yeah, no, it's been a, it's been a good week, uh, Steve. Mm -hmm. um, Working on projects, um, and uh, yeah, no, that's about it, really. Nice, nice. Uh, Busy. Canadian Spider Man. How's your week been? And he's muted. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're doing a Tony Stark thing. <laughs> this is a brand new. This is a brand new camera, Rod. I'm so sorry. Uh, when I was cheersing, I thought my mic was muted. I apologize. I didn't mean to interrupt your super cool story. I mean, those guys are wrestling 
Canadian not wrestling legends, really. Oh yeah, Stu uh, was well done. Yeah. Sadly, uh, when I was out there, is when Owen passed. That was a hard time to be out there. Oh, mm. that was hard. Yeah. That was funny oh, because my fantastic. yeah, the Easter that I Please, the Easter dinner that I had there was actually the first Easter without Owen. So it was actually a little bit little bit solemn. Yeah, yeah but it was neat. Yeah. It was neat though because like I you know I met Brett personally and you know and Stu Hart. Well, you know I mean part part of the reason why, the whole reason why I got invited there actually was because uh, Stu was uh, I. George, I introduced, uh, took me over to uh, to meet Stu, and I was just kind of like, whoa, I was still blown away. I'm just like, whoa, you know, just all the I stories, know, everything I... written in the, you know, and then, like, I'm sitting in the kitchen, all of a sudden the dog's sitting there, and all of a sudden the dog, their dog, very, very, very old, probably, like, I don't he know. Loved his dogs, years, yeah. He loved his dogs, yeah. He loved his dogs. Yeah, and then all of a sudden the dog pees, like, right on the, right in the middle of the kitchen, and then I'm just yes. kind of like, and then all of a sudden. Yeah, and then like, and then Helen just runs over. She's all embarrassed. Like, oh my god, I can't believe it! And I'm just like, oh, I'm from the farm. I see animals do that all. Uh, dogs do that all the time here. Yeah, you know? yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. and then Stu got it in his head that uh, you know because the poor dog was constipated and you know through dry crap on his bum hole. So Stu got in this you know, like I'm gonna get I'm gonna give him a bath. You know, and well, actually, like the first thing he said when he saw me, by the way, was like, "Hey, like, so uh, you look like uh, Morris." You know, like uh, Morris is a Red Thunder from Stamp, uh, a native Stampede yeah, wrestler. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I went downstairs, and then like, uh, if anybody who doesn't know, uh, the Heart House, the Heart House is actually a World War One hospital, Army yes. hospital. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Cool. yeah. 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 So he carried the dog downstairs, and the uh, dog, uh, and he put the dog in the sink. You know, it's like one of those giant sinks. Like anybody who's who's been to a farm like me, well, I grew up on a farm. Um, you know, put the dog in the sink, start scrubbing the do uh, dog off, and like it was not a good. Like, I mean, it, I know a lot of people probably wouldn't do it. They'd be like, "Ew, no, thank you." And I'm just kind of, uh, I'm right in there, and like you know, reaving them out and everything, and like you know, and then Stu's like sitting there, like he's impressed, he's smiling. He's like, "So you must have uh, done this before," you know, and I said. I said, well, I'm from the farm, man. I used to, you know, I used to throw in like calves <clears throat> with, uh, uh, with guts all over them, over the, uh, you know, once they get born, because they got afterbirth all over them and all that. And I'm saying, like, I'm, I'm used to, it. I see that stuff all the time on the farm. <laughs> and then he was just, he, he, he laughed at that. And then he said, uh, I said, say, so, you know, and like after, you know, I took the dog out, you know, we dried the dog off and they took the dog into the dungeon, you know, and he was just like, say, so, you want to see some moves? I was like, Oh, sir, I'd be absolutely honored. You know, he pulls me oh, in. Did you get a few moves? <laughs> oh yeah, man. He did a few moves on me, and like, man, I don't know what. Uh, I'm like, he he pulled he pulled me down, and then like, I don't know what the hell what the hell he did. And suddenly, like, I was laying down. My arms were up like this. He had one arm laced behind my neck, like, and I'm just like sitting there, I'm, like, my I'm just I could feel myself just like turning red, and then like, and then like, you know, I'm just like, <laughs> you know, and like I I was kind of like going. I wasn't like I was trying not to groan or anything like yeah. that. And then, you know, but then like he was impressed. And later on he went upstairs and he just kind of he didn't scream or groan. He did uh, good for him. Uh, he's a we got a fighter here. It's a good stew impression. Yeah. And now I never got to get stretched by him, but he could take down a 300 pound football player and make them cry. And he was an old man, he didn't care. He that man could hurt you if he wanted to. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. And as a result of that, uh, Helen was so impressed with my, she said kindness, because I was, you know, I was, I just helped them out with, it gave them a hand, no problem. And then she was like, so, so what are you doing tomorrow? How'd you like to come out for Easter dinner? And I just kind of like, overload. <laughs> and then like, they laughed at that. And I'm just going, like, absolutely. I was like, oh, oh my God. Yes. And like, they're good people. Yeah, they were good people, and they fed me barley soup just out of the here. I had some barley soup and kept me up here slept firmly. Man, yeah. I slept. Yeah, it was a good experience. I, yeah, I think it's called oh, beer. Man. Barley yeah. soup is called beer. Yes. <laughs> so, Canadian Spider Man, did you finish yes, sir. how your week was going? <clears throat> um, I just about. a new camera. Okay. I do <laughs> have a new camera. Yeah. Do I look sexy? Uh, I think it might take more than a camera for that. <laughs> yeah. It is clear, though. It's a very crisp picture, I will say. It looks yeah, it is. Nice. It's nice. Yeah, yeah. So my week has been 
Or did you still do you still want to continue? Yeah, no, it was just uh, getting firewood and and planting uh, planting seeds, planting seeds and weeds. Yeah, it's been great. That's it. Getting firewood and, and getting the garden ready. It's been fantastic. Nice. Using the chainsaw, doing manly stuff, having bonfires, yeah. having bonfires. Mm. No, I, how's how's your week, Steve? Ben, what have you been up to? Has it been boring? Uh, thanks or for what? asking. Yeah. What? Has it been boring or what's been what's been going on? Has it's it's been fun. So we had to move everything to StreamYard because Rumble Studios, there are some issues on my end. Um, my camera wasn't working and everything. So it's mm. we're doing it very old school. So we're not going to do any um, simp tweets tonight or any of Homebrew or Senorita. Um, oh. Some stuff just because I'm working with different things. I know, man. I was very excited. I had everything ready. So next week we'll do all that. So we'll save the good stuff for next week. Don't worry. Uh, my week's been pretty, pretty good. It's Saturday. I worked crazy hours helping a guy with some work and then, yeah, getting this show ready. I'm very excited. Last week was such a good episode. I was like, we're going to talk about cars and, um, yeah, it's this weekend. I'm doing a men's conference. Um, I kind of feel like I have to do it, even though I'm kind of actually curious. I was like, all right, I want I want to go to a men's conference. But doing a show all about men's health, it's like, you know what? Come on. It's if I don't do it, it's a little hypocritical. It's yeah. So I have to do it. Hey there, Andy Besserson. And how's Andy. your week been? Well, my week. So Sunday morning, I wake up. There's a note in the bathroom that says, be careful, the oh. toilet seat is broken. So I know what I'll be doing today after I get done work, <laughs> take the dog to the dog park. So get home from the dog park. Jack got to play with nine different dogs. He had a great time. <laughs> uh, I get home. I run over to Lowe's. I pick up a couple of toilet seats. My daughter says, can you get the soft clothes kind that don't just slam shut? We can do that. I get home, come downstairs, get my tools in the basement floor, and it's covered with water. Oh, I look at the water heater, just like drip, pouring water out the top. Well, I know what I'm going to be doing today. <laughs> so I went over to Home Depot and bought a water heater and a couple of shark bite uh, uh, water lines and and I had to go to Lowe's to get the flex gas pipe because they didn't have that at Home Depot. And I spent the rest of the night doing that. Um, but Whoa. it was a beautiful day. I sat outside, <clears throat> got some sun, uh, did some work. I have a lot of things that I got done. Um, the... <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, you're awesome. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yes, <coughs> there's some nightmare fuel for you. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. So yeah, it's been that kind of day. That's all. I remember. I remember when my wife, our water heater, when we were in that apartment, the top of it burst and mm. just gushed out water. So the people below us flooded. Yeah. Oof. I was like, well, I know what's going to happen. No, it was, but the problem tray. is, though, a the drain. problem is, though, it is supposed to be in a tray, but it overflowed so much that it went into the other people's apartment and it flooded that little section. They blamed you. Well, well it they did. The it, they did blame us, but then when they found out oh, it was the water here, like there was nothing. It's like, okay, we can't really blame you. It, it's just burst. Yeah. That's it. yeah. <clears throat> but, yeah, water heaters suck. I hate putting those in. I've installed enough to where I don't want to do them anymore. Nice. <sighs> well, tonight, folks, um, it's going to be a little bit different. Um, just with, we don't have any intros, any slides or anything. We're going to go old school Manorama style. Because that's how we do, baby. That's how we do. Tonight, for our 71 episode, it's all about need for fuel. Um, 
It could be whether diesel, petrol. Ooh, there's a little bridge right there. Petrol, tarmac. Mm. <laughs> I've watched way too many tar uh, Top Gear. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, do you guys? Okay, here's a question. Do you guys? Did you guys ever watch Top Gear growing up? Used to. Well, I say Only that now that you guys are young, back in early two thousand. Growing up. But did you guys? Ever <laughs> I had the my brother got. I was gonna say the, the Flintstones, <laughs> Andy. <laughs> My brother got me into it in the it? early 2015. Okay, so do we, any of you guys watch Top Gear? Yeah. Totally. My when favorite is the Patagonia old... special. Oh, that's a when good episode. Yeah, when, they, when oh. they got kicked out of Argentina and literally had oh, the police yeah. escort them to the border. And then they awesome. moved over to Amazon and they did their own show, which now has actually ended. And then Amazon's like, we're going to have a whole new cast. It's like... How's that going to work out? But um, do you guys remember watching? Because I guarantee you, all you guys, you're all into cars, of course, and in mm -hmm. some way, shape, or form, Canadian mm -hmm. Spider Man has deep behind him. Um, did you guys ever watch Top Gear or just like watch any car shows, like even when you were growing up? Dukes of Hazard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dukes yeah. of Hazard. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dukes of Hazard. I, bl I blame that Night show Rider. for ruining all those cars. Oh, Daisy Duke. Night Rider. Mm -hmm. I got a pair of Daisy Duke somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I actually do. <laughs> the 18 van. I used to have the oh, Dinky car, the 18 van. You know? Oh, that's such a, such a cool. Well, here, okay, so here's a question I have from you guys. Growing up, what was your dream car? Pickup we'll go truck. I got pickup truck. I, what type of pickup <clears throat> truck, though, Andy? Um, an old one, an old beat up one. It really didn't matter about the uh, um, <clears throat> the make. Um, I um, I bought a Ford first because my dad was uh, good friends with a guy who owned a Ford dealership. And uh, my son still drives that truck. It was uh, it's a 1994 F 1994 F-150. <clears throat> still runs like a bear. Um, oh, that's what I had. Oh, uh, now, when my brother passed away, he gave me his truck. And because, um, you know, he obviously wasn't going to use it anymore. And um, so then <laughs> it's been nothing but problems. It's been like. The, Wait, the what truck is it? It's an F-150 with the 5.4 liter engine, and it's a pain in the balls. So What year? Uh, 2007. Oh. Ouch. That's yeah, cool. I know that year for the F-150s wasn't that good. Yep. Like, here's the thing. I, I talked to a guy who's a mechanic, and he said, look, if you want to get a Ford, get these certain years. If you want to get a Dodge, get these certain years. If you want to get a Chevy, get these certain years. If you want to get a Toyota, any year is good. So I, I lean towards Toyota just because they're more reliable. And then I looked on – there was a Toyota Tacoma I was looking at. Um, Ooh. I think it was like a 2010. Hasn't gone down a single dime. It's like – Fifteen thousand dollars to buy a Tacoma from a 2010 Tacoma. And I was like, "What in the heck?" And I talked to some people. It's one of the most reliable trucks. Like you, you can fix it. I like them, but uh, I kind of like the small trucks. The smaller trucks, man. I don't care as long as it runs <laughs> and I can work on it. Like a Ford Banger, like a Ford Ranger. I can. Do, I'm happy with that. Uh, Rod, what was your dream car growing up? Actually, Optimus Prime. I actually, <laughs> I actually, I actually wound up owning um, my two dream vehicles. You know, and then like, well, it's not that you grow up; it's just simply like you're just kind of like, well, it's, uh, but, well, mostly because like, um, I got myself a, my dream vehicle of like a jacked up mini four, uh, jacked up Nissan Mini four by four. It was, I loved it. You know, I, I mean. Yeah, you know, there's a little rust here and there and all that, but I mean, like, oh God, I just I, I loved it, and uh, you know, and of course it was a four banger, so of course it wasn't it was pretty good on gas, and um, 
I love driving around with my truck uh, with my uh, with my wolf husky satch in the back, and the back had uh, triple roll bars, <clears throat> and satch loved to sit. You know, because of course, I mean, with the wind, you know, when you're driving along the wind resistance, you know, I mean, like the roll bars wound up providing giving giving him a little bit of a you know a little bit of shade or well wind shade you know and uh, it was funny too because i had cars that were some cars would try to tailgate me but also like they'd see they'd see satch just sitting there you know just and he and like with his white wolf eyes he'd just be like glaring and also cars kind of they just black back off um and years but years later uh well a couple years later i stumbled across oh my real dream vehicle which was uh Night uh, 1988 uh, uh, Pontiac Trans Am GTA Grand Touring uh, Grand Touring Trans Am, and Ooh. I'll tell you, it was a 350. Uh, it was an automatic, which uh, yeah, fine. You know, I mean, I don't know. I, I ultimately I like the automatic anyways because automatic is just kind of like you put you put it in drive, and then like you're at a, you're at a stoplight and you just <clears throat> you bag it and like you know, I love yeah. that car. I loved it all death. It had, it was one of the first ve uh, vehicles to have like steering wheel controls for the radio. And um it was just a really really gorgeous car. I uh, ultimately I had to junk it because uh I was at West Edmonton Mall in the parking lot and uh this is where I found out that uh when you're in a parking lot and somebody runs into you you're you're technically on private property. So you better watch your ass mm -hmm. and and yeah um you know which means that the rules of the road don't always apply which means that i had a i had a stop sign i had or, or sorry no he had a stop sign uh and um uh i you know i'm just kind of okay nobody's there and all of a sudden like this car <laughs> smashed into my right smashed into the right side of the right basically just mangled my front uh, my front tire and just and push it right up into like the, uh, the car and like my buddy uh he wasn't wearing a seatbelt and he got popped into my, uh, popped into my lap right beside me oh uh, uh, it really hurt me to have to even, even just have to junk it to sell uh, to sell, <laughs> to sell it. like yeah well, it's but those those were my two re dream vehicles nice uh tom You're still muted. <laughs> I got two mutes. I got my thing in that. Okay. Um, growing up. Oh, yeah, um, I got two mutes. I'm that cool. All right, Buzzy. <laughs> <laughs> but now growing up, I mine are a little bit more foreign. Um, I always liked the Lamborghini Countach. Uh, just a beautiful, beautiful. Oh. It's just art. It's a piece of art, in my opinion. Not just a beautiful car. That's a gorgeous car. But, but. All in all, it would be the Corvette Stingray. Uh, th 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 we're going back uh, for uh, was it '69? A beautiful, beautiful. Just you know, and no, I've never owned any. God, I wish, but uh, no, just. The, and I, I used to work security um, at uh, the local arena here, a big one, and I'd always love working the overnights for the car shows because I get to walk around when nobody was around, eh? And I just, just you get to sit there and sit in them and admire them, and just I got to sit in one once, and it was just, oh. But no, I'm not. That was the two dream ones. Now I'm more of a bike person. Bikes are my passion. I've always loved motorbikes. All but right. If, What's your dream bike? Car, my dream bike here is actually one of this one. Now, we can't show pictures right now, but it's a – mine is the uh, either the Ducati Street Warrior. It's a beautiful – it's a beautiful machine. Or the Indian Scout Bobber. Now, a lot of people would say Harleys. I know many guys that own Harleys. Like they break one. down constantly. They're hard to repair. They're still nice bikes. But uh, uh, Indian is always a little bit more stable. That's like Honda. If you want a good bike, Honda is the most stable bike you can ever get. They rarely ever break down. They're very easy to get on parts, and yeah, like like the, the Honda Rebels. You get the, the new ones are automatic, believe it or not, too. Um, the new Honda Rebel 1000s, but um, yeah, Honda is always the most reliable. If you want something reliable, go Honda. Me, I love the Indian Scout Bobber is a beautiful, beautiful bike, you know, just gorgeous. Yeah, uh, Canadian Spider Man, uh, yeah, Steve, um, great Before question. We a four by four maple bottle is your drink car, isn't it? No, man, you'd think so, wouldn't you? You'd think so, no. Um, no, Steve, honestly, my I, I've got two, and my first dream car would probably be like a Lamborghini Countach, um, like a violet purple, like a deep metallic purple, 
Violet Lamborghini Countach. <clears throat> and then my second car would probably be a Shelby Cobra. I would have to do that. Good. Uh, Shelby Cobra. Um, now, any year. Wait, with a soft up. top. With a soft I top. Think, I think everyone has a lot of questions. <laughs> no, it makes logical sense what he's doing. I, I, I know. <laughs> it's... Really? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I <laughs> man up and have when you're on diesel. a construction site, <laughs> th those little bottles don't friggin' hold enough. So that's a good way to hide it. Yeah, definitely. Get the if, diesel container. What are you, what are you drinking? That's the thing. I'm not drinking pod. What type of petrol are you drinking? <laughs> I can. Russian. It's F. Russian gasoline. There you go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh man, Canadian Spider Man, you had the gags, that's for sure. Uh Jeff, what is your what was your dream car or cars growing up? I had two. Uh the first one I actually got to have for a little while, and that was my grandfather's AMC Rebel oh. that had the 390 in it. And that's the car I learned how to drive. That's that was nice fun. One. But Growing up, my next door neighbors, they were car freaks. And I had my two neighbors, um, one worked on trucks, but my immediate neighbor, they repaired and up and upgraded uh, old Mercury Cougars. And when those cars are done up, with the beautiful chrome, the paint jobs, the, you know, engine modifications and, and everything, those cars are just flat out fast as hell and you know they would have a new one every couple of months because that's all that was their only hobby was finding a junker and rebuilding it painting it and uh, it used to be it, it was fun work going down there going to, over to them working on it and uh, my stepfather would go over and help weld some of the uh, frames that needed to be put back together straight so you know part of the joy of that was you know i got to learn a little bit about engines a little bit about this and of course, get to go along for some of the rides. Yeah, that's those are nice. My dream cars was it's the DeLorean. Ooh. Um, which now that I taught when when I got to know Gary more, he told me more about that car. And I've learned from I had a friend who worked in Hollywood, and his dream car was the R Audi R8. He ended up getting, and he's like, "This, I don't want it anymore." And to me, dream cars is you just—it's nice to get to it, but eventually, like, you kind of ruined your dream car. But to me, it's always the DeLorean. It's one of the. I've got Steve's dream car right here. Get yeah, share the screen, oh. Steve. Okay, I'm I'm nervous now. <laughs> you dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. It's got multi-terrain traction. Uh, yeah. That looks too too big. Does it come with safety belts for him? <laughs> and a phone book. <laughs> <laughs> hey, for fifty-one dollars and seventy-five cents a month for six months, I can pay. Hey. You know, it, you, it, you you make a good joke here, but you know what one of my favorite things was to do was to I got one of those for my son and add electronics and LED lights to them. Oh, so, yeah. you know, you could actually spruce mm -hmm. it up and drive it at night and do some of the fun stuff with it. Never got around to putting the radio on it, though. You should add a pellet gun to it. Well, I saw Shut one up, guy yeah. he put a go-kart engine in it <laughs> for his son. Oh, yeah, That's not that. Yeah, there's a new that does that. To here. me, um nice, Rod. Orion, like what top what Rod has. I have, I think, ten of those different models of the Back to the Future car. I just think it's the most fascinating thing. And I think Elon Musk did it smart by actually doing a Cybertruck looking like a DeLorean. Yeah. And the DeLorean's like, we're gonna make our own, and it looks like a Porsche. Yeah. I'm like you guys really screwed up. Even the DeLorean um daughter is like, no, this is a disgrace. But my second dream car, 
it's this one. I'll never own it because I know the problems. Like the DeLorean has a lot of problems and issues. Mm. Like if I bought it, I still have to go to, um, I forget the two areas, one in California and one in Texas to get it kind of fixed up to where you're not going to have all the issues. Like if it breaks down, you're pretty much fucked and you're just screwed. Like, uh, is the, I think it's the 67 or 68 Mustang Shelby GT 500. I saw, I took a picture of it where I was at. We do a big car show in the town that I'm at and <laughs> the town next to us. And I finally saw the, the Mustang Shelby GT 500 modern, like it was all modern stuff added to it. Probably one of the most, I'll try to find a picture. And I'll post it on Twitter. It is one of the most gorgeous cars ever. And I think gone in 67, gone in 60 seconds for this because it is such a cool looking car. I, uh, it's just there. Oh. And I actually drove a 66 Mustang one time. And then when I was a valet, I'm not big on supercars. They're Wait, did nice. you say you were in the ballet? Valet. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> ballet. Yeah, ballet. That's what I. Heard. I couldn't do ballet. I'd be I'd be the dude that's being lifted up. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, little man. Um, <laughs> I have driven some Ferraris, Ooh, and they're man. nice. I, I remember when I, I think I've told this story before on this show. Um, when I was a valet for a casino, there was a guy who had the first when the um, Nissan had their GT car come out, GTO or whatever it's called, the GT. Yeah, yeah. And um, oh, yeah. and they had that car, and it was the showcase. It was like the legit, this is the high-end one. And then I drove it, and the guy's like, hey, when do you get off work? And I was like, this is kind of an odd question to ask me. I was like, I get off in a couple hours. Why? He goes, meet me in the back. I was like, oh, boy. This is not going to go so well. Like, this has turned out to be like a Circle K already kind of story here. And, yeah, you know, the car just – idling he's like get in and just accelerate i was like well just accelerate he's like yeah so i accelerated the showcase car of the um their nissan's um the like new skyline i can't think of what it's called now and and i accelerate and the guy gave me 100 bucks he's like i just wanted to see if you could ex peel out and accelerate it was a fun car um yeah, that's the only time I got paid to actually accelerate with a nice car. I'm not big right. on supercars. It's it's so expensive. I'm like, I don't want to pay twenty thousand dollars for tires. Like, no. It's yeah, like, yeah. Have you, okay. Exactly. Thing. Have you guys been? Raise your hand if you're like big on electric cars. We'll go into that topic. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I, I like unex, unexplained and unexpected fires and explosions. Yeah, yeah. I I bet here's the other thing. I'd been in um the Tesla's SUV. I went there was one night I was like completely hammered and I got an Uber. Huh. And this guy had the SUV or their version of an SUV with the the gall wings and doors and all of that stuff. And it was it's probably the most comfortable car I've ever sat in, the Teslas. They're very comfortable. And he put it on ludicrous speed, and I'm like completely like, all right, I've had a few drinks in me, I'm having fun. I was like, all right, I love acceleration. I would never own one, just because there's no sound. You're not hearing the engine, like yeah. when you got okay. So here's a better question: When you guys hear the sound of like a V8 or a diesel or something, like when you turn it on, what does that? What feel do you get out of that? When you turn on a car, on. Just, you feel it, you hear it, you see it. Yeah, arousal. like yeah, the arousal. Like when you turn on an electric <laughs> car, it's like. Well, I don't know about that. But... My tumor starts vibrating. Mm. <laughs> it's not mm. a tumor. It's not a tumor at all. <laughs> What's even more dangerous? It's motorbikes, electric motorbikes, because they're hard to see. You got to hear them because they're hard. You know, you can get a chance to get hit by cars that aren't paying attention. Those electric motorbikes, are, nobody can hear you at all. It's even more dangerous. Like, Loud hey. pipes save lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yes. <clears throat> so here's a question I have for you guys. 
I know just asked a bunch of random questions and we all answer and we move in fast. Cool, cool, cool. Um, do you guys what's the craziest thing you've done with a car? Conceived a child. Hmm. <laughs> oh with the car? With the car. I you Holy said, crap. In car. We're with I'm hey, glad you clarified. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff, what's the craziest thing you've done with a car? Probably racing on the back roads along the Potomac against my friend and my Mustang going about 110 and Ooh. jumping hills and <clears throat> Now we're talking. It <laughs> was absolutely hilarious. And now that my son is five days away from getting his driver's license, absolutely scares me that he's going to do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Andy, besides conceiving a child, what's another crazy thing? Well, car um, let's see. <laughs> um, I made it. I once made a daring escape from. I was driving along and I had an expired inspection sticker. And I'm driving this way, and somebody decides to put on the right turn signal, pull over, and I'm about to pass them. They change their mind to whip back. So I swerve to avoid him just as a cop is coming towards me. So I go over the double line because I don't want to get hit. So he spins around, and I'm like, Oh, fuck. So I just hit the gas. I zoom up a little bit, like, you know, slam my brake, go over, it goes over a little bit of a hill, slam my brakes, pull into this pizza shop, put my car in park, and like, and he goes, zoom, he was flying by. I turned back and went the other way. Um, <laughs> that was a good escape. And uh, then one time we were, uh, I was with my buddy Joe in his, uh, in his Corvette. I think it was a 97 Corvette. And um, so, we just left uh, um, JG Cook's a little little bar, and um, we're talking about something. This Mustang pulls alongside and starts revving his engine. So he's like, "Man, why is it always got to be Mustang?" So he hits the he had the governor taken out of it too. So he uh, <laughs> he hits the gas. My head yeah. goes, boom, and I'm like, <clears throat> and I look in the mirror and I see these two little headlights behind me getting smaller and smaller. I look over at the speedometer and it's like 127. And I'm like. I hope a deer doesn't pop out right now. <laughs> that was that was fun. Uh, Canadian Spider Man. Yeah, that's uh, well. I mean, gotta. Yeah, I was. I was. I I put myself through university um, snow plowing. Uh, you know, running a snow plow business in New Brunswick. It, it, and and New Brunswick has wet heavy heavy snow yeah and, and it uh, quite a bit that. yeah <laughs> and and fredericton <laughs> is built on on a hill like a big significantly sized ridge hill and i remember and i had snowplow customers in this tightly packed residential area and i remember i was coming down i was cutting across to get from one main street to another and I took a turn down through this sleepy residential cul-de-sac. It was garbage day. Everyone had those big garbage bins out in their driveways and all the garbage cans out at the front of their driveways. And it had just snowed, obviously. That's why I was so snow plowing, coincidentally enough. And everyone had shoveled. It was later in the morning, though. I was going around doing all the seniors at this point. And everyone had shoveled their driveways and had all the, the, the snow piled at the, at the mouth of their driveways and their garbage cans out at the front. And I was at the top of the hill. And this one guy had moved his car out into the into the middle of the road going downhill uh, and parked there while he cleaned out his driveway. I lost my brakes on my big Chevy. It was a five-quarter ton. It's a Chevy one ton. It used to be military. I got it at a military base, uh, gauge, base gauge town auction. Okay, yeah. So it's a, it's, it's a Chevy one ton. The, uh, Ghostbusters actually has them. Uh, yeah, um, in, in the Ghostbusters, the original Ghostbusters movie. And it was beefed up. It was beefed up. It was heavy. It weighed with the snow plow because I used to drive over the weigh scales. It weighed it weighed three and a half tons with nothing on it. Wow. I lost my brakes at the top of the hill. And to get around the gentleman had just moved his car out into the street to shovel his driveway. To get around him, it was all snowed in. It was very packed, tight street. 
I had no choice. In order to avoid the gentleman's car that he just moved out in the street, I had to take out two of the na- – this guy, I, I should have gone back to him with flowers, blew out both of his front snowbanks at the front of his driveway that he just snowplowed, and his garbage cans that were on them, couldn't stop, couldn't explain, all the way down to the hill. I coasted into Wonder Muffler, and they repaired my brakes. Garbage <laughs> cans went – it was – like it looked malicious. Like if you wanted to do a malicious garbage can attack and be a dick on a neighbor and clean out his snow <laughs> and like all the snow, all the garbage back in his driveway. I was I was a kid. I was too embarrassed. I was like 21. I didn't go back. I should have. Now I would. <laughs> should have brought him a bottle of whiskey and explained the story. But uh yeah, that was you that end, but I no one died. It was either that or take out the car and the dude, you know. I had no choice. Sometimes a man's got to do what a man's got to do. I'm just picturing his credit in his hilly. I've known. It's like, wow. So, wow, man. <laughs> uh, Tom. I don't know if I should tell this story, but I'm going to tell it. Uh, mine was, I wasn't of age. <laughs> I was 14. And uh, friends <laughs> stole your father's car. Oops. So, we're just driving around the neighborhood, teaching ourselves to drive. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it was like three in the morning, two in the morning, something like that. You know, you'd camp in your back of your yard and somebody stole their dad's keys. And um, yeah, it was an old Volkswagen. And we just uh, drove around the neighborhood. (laughs) Luckily, didn't hit anything. But um, all everybody driving really slow. You're only 14. You don't know what the hell you're doing at the time. But, you know, it's middle of the night. And what the hell? There you go. Uh, Rod. Don't arrest me. (laughs) Ah, well, I'm going to have to, probably the wildest thing would have to be, I, uh, me and, uh, three, four friends, uh, we had actually, um, uh, gone down to Crossfield, which is down by Calgary, uh, and we were going to start working there because there's a, uh, there was a mushroom farm that worked there or work there that 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 was there Uh, like an actual like like not like magic like remember this is the 80s so like just like regular plain everyday like store-bought mushrooms and uh we'd actually had a great summertime you know and like this is actually also like uh, um 89 9 90 i think it was and um i was driving at the time just a plain old crappy plymouth horizon and uh, uh, we, we had, a, and then like we we applied at the mushroom farm, and they were more than ready to hire us, and we were gonna move down into the town of Crossfield. And then so on the way back, we like we were gonna go home for the weekend, and then just uh, and then um, we stopped in at Red Deer, and Red Deer, and uh, anybody who knows Alberta is like Red Deer is kind of the uh, city that's in between. Edmonton and Calgary. So, Cal, you know, Red Deer is kind of the little brother of uh, Edmonton and Calgary, which Edmonton and Calgary have a long storied history of rivalry between them, not just sports, like not just the, Evan- the Oilers and Calgary Flames, but also like the Stampeders and Eskimos and the, uh, and then even just like, even just as I said, storied history because the Edmonton, uh, Edmonton and Calgary, both as Alberta was slowly growing, they each had rivalries, you know, I mean, because Calgary had the Calgary Stampede, which started in 1905, which was literally the birth of the province and Edmonton. But then and then out Calgary was beginning to think, you know, they're getting started, you know, big for their britches. They're like, hey, we're we're going to get the capital of uh, Alberta. And all of a sudden Edmonton was given the uh, title of capital of Alberta. And then, as I said, it went from there anyway. We're headed back, uh, and like we stop in at Red Deer, and then we we go into you know because Red Deer at the time this is the eighties of course, uh, they're still they were Red Deer was sort of famous. Their nightclubs were for really just just lots of hot women, and yes, that was absolutely true. Yeah, and we had quite a yeah we had quite a few to uh, quite a bit to drink. I mean, we probably shouldn't have been driving, but hey, this is the eighties, and you know and. <clears throat> 
Um, but I will say that none of nobody was stumbling drunk, you know, you know, and like sort of just, you know what, now nah, let's go home. You know, and then, uh, so we were going to go home to my buddy Tim's up in Spruce Grove, which is uh, west of Edmonton, about uh, like maybe like 10 minutes, like not even. And we, I let my buddy Shane drive because we were, we were all pretty parked. <laughs> And uh, Shane was like the shortest guy of us, and he actually had drank the least. So, and, yeah, good for him. Anyway, he fell asleep at the wheel, Ugh. and um, I'll tell you, and I was on the back seat, me and my buddy Tim, and like we were the tallest guys. So, like, and like the two shortest guys were up front. We they pushed their seats forward because remember this is a Dodge Omni, and like it's just like literally like an econo box, you know, four cylinder, you know, four cylinder hatchback, and and we were just like. You know, and like we we didn't have our seatbelts on or nothing. You know, I and mean, of course at the time Alberta was you know, voluntary only had voluntary seatbelts. There wasn't it wasn't the law. And um, anyway, like I said, my buddy falls asleep, and then like we just went into the ditch, and all of a sudden like, oh, it's funny because like you know you're, you're snoozing nicely, uh, uh, you're snoozing nicely, you know, and all of a sudden like all of a sudden you hear the you just feel in here. You know, and I was just like, immediately, you know what, what it is. And I was just like, of course, you, you know, and all of a sudden, like, you see the approach, you know, he hits the approach, <clears throat> car skyrockets, you know, and then I'll, well, well actually went, you know, and like, man, I remember seeing the headlights pointing straight up at the, uh, the stars. We could see the stars. And all of a sudden, like, you know, all of a sudden, like, then we saw the headlights aimed directly at the ground. And then, like, literally the first thing, all of us were just like, and like, cause like, I don't think any of us were in seatbelts. We're just like, we're dead. You know? And also like the car went tumbled end over end, you know? And then all of a sudden like, and then when it finally stopped, then it actually landed on the side. And then like only me and my buddy Tim were in relatively good enough condition to climb out of that car. And uh, uh, when we got up, we pushed the car over, go, you know, and then like, yeah, our two buddies up front were, they were, they were, I guess they were good enough, but I mean, they, they still spent overnight in the hospital, but Tim went home and I went home and uh, now that I think about it, I really, I feel really bad about it, but I mean, like, I never, well, I feel bad about this. I mean, more in the fact that the, in the aftermath, I never did talk to my buddy Shane again. And like, this was not intentional. I mean, I love the guy. You know, I mean, he was my best friend when I was growing up. And then I just somehow just never got around to calling him again. I will say, perhaps I probably was feeling a little bit um, less less than angry for him falling, a little bit angry for him for falling asleep. You know, and, and like, as a result of that, it, it was my car that he wrecked. You know, and like, yeah. you know. But I mean, ultimately, I wish I was hoping my our friendship could overcome that. But I mean, like, it's, you know, I mean, this is now this is now thirty years later. So like, you know, thirty five years later. <clears throat> Here's so, one thing I'll say this, uh, or continue, Rod. <laughs> oh well, no, and and like that's, but yeah, no, like that's pretty much it. I mean, like that's like the most wildest thing I've ever done in a car, in a car. Well, I, it's not something I want to repeat either. I'll say this. I mean, like, I mean, I said, I mean, remember, like, seeing sky, ground, sky. And, like, each time, I just, like, we're dead. And, like, because, like, we didn't have seatbelts or nothing. And me and my buddy Tim, like, we got tossed around, like, socks in a dryer, you know? And, like, man. Yeah. And, and, Did like, you have and, time and, to think at all, Rod? Mm -hmm. Did you aside no from just, think? like, yeah, no, just aside from just, we're dead. That's. Pretty much everything. Yeah. I will I will say this. Jeff had to head out for medical reasons with his eye and stuff. That's okay. I'm glad he joined us. And um, oh. yeah, oh. so it's, hey, it's stuff happens, man. Um, <laughs> so I wish the best. Um, I hope he has a good recovery. Um, here's the other thing. I'll say this. Um, don't drink and drive. No, that's one. That's this one is, rule. Like, yes. I understand we were young, stupid. We've all done stupid things driving, but it's yeah, yeah. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone who's watching. We don't condone it. I don't. Never. No, no, no. If you had, a, if you had a beer, yeah, it's it's been a while. It's 
I just want to clarify 80s. that right quick because it's like everyone's gonna be like, oh, this, and I'm like, well, here's the thing, like, don't go and drink and drive. Like, I don't want anyone in the chat going like, hey, this and that. And it's like, yeah. mm, no, it's do you so here's the thing do you guys know what urban sledding is or what were you going to say tom you had your no, finger i, I just wanted to add did. to that um also yes. in, as a person who's a 420 or don't get stoned and drive either don't people Ooh, say we can do it don't do that either that's because you're still inebriating yourself and you're still not dead on conscious of what you're yep. doing and your timing is off so don't do that either yeah 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 so do you guys know what urban sledding is i've heard of you have to okay. refresh my memory, but I think I have heard yeah, of it. Yeah, Go on. I've heard of it. But... So this is kind of fun. Uh, you, get a, you get a rope, and you strap it to – usually it's a Jeep or a truck, a 4 by 4 oh, truck, okay. and it's smooth. And then you hook it up to a sled. I used a couch. <laughs> when I used to live in Nebraska, it snowed. When it's like we couldn't do any work or we couldn't do anything no school college was closed because it's too much snow and it's just dangerous we would find we would have open field properties and we would take a truck tie this nice. big long rope to a chair to a chair anything it's usually like a little sled thing and you would just drive and the person would sit in the back it's the funnest thing it's not stupid it's stupid if you're doing it in like actual cities where there's buildings and stuff. Don't do that. Open fields. Have fun. Yeah. But the craziest thing I ever did was, hey, a bunch of us in high school, we're going to race on the main street in Nebraska in one of the towns. Cool. We're going to do that. I spun out because I hit a rock and it <laughs> made me spin out and it would there was no alcohol involved. It was just completely sober. I was like, all right, cool. I call then, bullshit. No, there was not. Yeah, I'm dead serious. <laughs> it's plus it was like during right when a few days before it started snowing, so it's like the roads were icy. That's the other thing. Understand the the roads. It's yeah. So I did. Can that. I actually I add to that out. story when you're done? Okay, actually, I got one that just. No, happened. I got. Yeah, you, know, you can. Yeah, me too. I'll just throw it in. Now we have the same, similar here, except we have the ice. Yeah, we're top. The That's okay. Hey, the you know, the water freezes, right? So over here. So instead it of does? doing, yeah, I know. <laughs> Canada, eh? So um, similar to, I thought it was that, but I've heard of your version. But here, we when people have the ice fishing, you always get the sections which are frozen over. You grab onto the car, the bumper, and he just drives. And your feet, you make sure you got good boots on, and you're just grabbing onto the bumper. That works too. I've done that, and then I climb. I'm literally, I climb my way to his seat, and then he opened his window, and I'm literally hanging on to the door in his window. Hey, dude, hey. So he just, you know, I'm ice skating along the skate, you know, and yeah, similar to that, but yeah. Fun times. Yeah, it's, I will say this right now, and then we'll get to Canadian Spider-Man. There is a poll on Twitter. I forgot to mention this. There's a poll on Twitter. It is, let me pull it up right quick. It is the manliest beard. And right now, <laughs> who I have in it is Jason Momoa, Chris Hemsworth, Jake Gyllenhaal, and me. So that's if you want to put in, if you want to put your vote in the poll, you can go do that right now. It's because I think every like Tuesdays, like let's do the craziest poll right now. Mm. One person said Jesus. I'm like, okay, that's a game changer. <laughs> Uh, right today's writer, what were you gonna, what's your what, what were you gonna say? Grizzly Adams. <clears throat> uh, Grizzly no, Adams. Uh, just, uh, just just quick. Oh, you don't know who that is. I know who Grizzly Adams is. <laughs> okay. Um, no, just quickly. Uh, yeah, two summers ago, uh, we were changing locations. We had a bonfire uh, location switch, so uh, we were too. Uh, again, we didn't want to drive. Uh, we were had been drinking. Uh, and in Canada, you cannot get a DUI for being drunk on a bicycle. You can get drunk in public, but you cannot get a DUI, unlike half of the United States. Uh, so we got towed behind our buddy who was sober, his pickup truck, three of us, like we were water skiing with ropes, like about 50 feet long on, on bicycles. And it was about, it's about 8K. We got up to 60 kilometers an hour and we get up to the our destination. We made it. To the destination, we only pass like two cars. It's the countryside, right? Mm. We get to our destination. 
and the buddy with he had you know one of those little trailers that you put your children in that go behind your bicycle it started speed wobbling as we got to our destination oh. he wiped out my other buddy's bicycle the frame cracked right up the 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 steering wheel came loose he went into the ditch but he he's tall so he was able to straddle it and actually stay upright the whole time i don't know how he did it and and i was i i didn't have any i was just watching them whole in stunned uh disbelief but yeah so i don't recommend that but it is better than uh drunk driving uh if you must yeah, yeah. get towed behind your sober friend on a bicycle 50 feet is the minimum uh, rope length uh, distance for that. Yeah, to add, don't do what I did on the ice in the car, holding on. That's not good. Kids, kids. So, Andy, <laughs> no, you get exhausted doing that. <laughs> I know. Andy, what? I'm going to try. I'm trying to come up with this question real quick. Uh, so, cars are kind of in men's DNA. Some, mm. so when you become a man, it's like in your DNA. It's you give the car a name. It's usually a girl's name. I named one of my cars Goose because it was white, and I was like Goose. And then top, I was a, I'm a huge Top Gun fan, so I was like, I got to do it. What's what's something for guys who don't know cars very well, especially manuals? Because if you have a manual car, no one's gonna steal it these days because they're like, what's that? alien type deal <laughs> but how should guys approach cars like whether it's like building thing building it like what's like what's a life skill that you can learn with cars for guys to like learn how to be men well number one keep in mind that most importantly the car is for transportation to get you back and forth to work um and unless you're made of money and you can afford to replace it, take care of it. Um, look for something reliable. Uh, if you're looking for something to show off, there's going to be time for that when you can get yourself established and you've got dispendable cash and you can you can do that. If you're going to buy something that's going to like put you in the hole and keep you uh, paying bills and repairs and all that stuff, it's not worth it because it's going to stop you from getting greater success. So like you'll have some great stories, but I guarantee you're going to like eating a lot better. Um, and keep in mind too, that, you know, you're, if you get something and you don't trust yourself with the speed, probably don't get that car because you will, I've known a lot of people that have died because they were going too fast. Um, enjoy your vehicle you should take some pride in it should be something that you can in, you can enjoy like to me i've never been like you know that that crazy with like uh, i i had a dream car that i bought a 67 mustang convertible that i started oh. fixing up and then ran out of money and had to sell it for less than i bought it for um <clears throat> so that was a bad idea um but always keep in mind that like if you're if you're having a, a, a dream car can be great if just like dreaming, you do it part time and don't dream, be, dream behind the wheel. So um, if it's going to be more of a problem than a benefit, keep that in mind. Short term things you're going to think of is going to be great. Everything's going to be wonderful. It's not. Cars cost you money. They break down. They're expensive to fix. Um, I think that every every young man should learn basic things about vehicles and uh how to how to do basic things um it used to be my first car was a 1973 chevy impala and it had a 350 in it and i replaced pretty much everything in there except for the engine and the transmission um at one point or another uh, so it's good to know those things because it can save you some money and and it, it's a good skill it's like it's good to understand what's getting you around um but just don't be stupid and like and spend every every dime you save on your vehicle because then you have nothing left for anything else you you might get an, a pretty girl looking at your car but you can't take her anywhere because you can't afford it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i the thing that i'm learning 
as I'm getting older, closer to my 40s, is like I'm saving up to get a pickup truck. That's the other thing. If if there's a car that you're dead set, look at different cars and do your research. And be financially good about your money when it just don't go be like, all right, I'm gonna buy the newest vehicle. Here's a little thing about climate change. Um used cars are actually good for the climate. Who would have thunk? Um, they've gone through all the process being driven and stuff. It's they're broken in. Not go steal it, but just broken in. It's like someone's driven it and it's just it's good mileage and everything. When it comes to guys, let's say you want to get a truck. Like for me, I'm saving up for a truck. You don't have to go. My dream truck is like the Ford Raptor. I'm not paying $100,000. I'm sorry. I'm not paying. If I can pay the cost of what a house is, I'm not going to do it. It's just, it's not, it's not sustainable. It's not financially good. Hmm. For me, it's like a Tacoma or a Ford Ranger or something I can actually work on myself. There's no computers, no nothing. Um, just, just be smart with your money. It's, I think when you get older, the less you care about how you look. Like to me, dream cars are meant for when you retire or if you get re or you get to the retire stage. You're at the age where they're like, you know what? I want to get this. If you want to get a Corvette, Porsche, whatever nice car, cool. A weekend kind of dr drive car, classic car, cool. But the older you get, you're like, you know what? I'll get this manual truck or car or whatever it is it has a hole in the floor which in the car but i can fix it that's the other thing guys if if you know someone who works on cars learn from them and then you can actually work on your car because there's nothing better than actually fixing your own car for way cheaper and you're like hey i accomplished something i fixed this i had a mm -hmm. mercury Trussell. And a Mercury Tracer. Actually, I, my first car was a Mercury Tracer. And that sucker was hell for me because I always had to fix it. I learned how to fix it. And I ended up learning how to fix trucks. And I learned how to fix all these other things. And then I found out cars have computers. And I was like, I'm out. I can't do it. <laughs> this is stupid. Mm -hmm. But just learn. Like, I think with guys, it's that's a bonding moment where you can hang out with a group of guys. who are like, hey, I'm putting an engine in. You would just want to hang out and yep. have a couple of beers, put an engine in. There's a bonding moment where it's just yes. like a group of guys just hanging out and you get to you get to have conversations with people and that you wouldn't normally get. That's the other thing, guys. We don't really have deep conversations publicly. It's usually when we're smoking a cigar, having a whiskey, or working on a car. It's just private, and then the conversations become so cool where it's like we're talking about deep. I remember I was talking, I had, I was smoking a cigar and having some Scotch whiskey, and we had deep theological conversations. And I was like, you never get this anywhere else. And I said, what would happen if we had a car here and we were working on the car? And like, oh man, conversations would be even crazier. It's there. There's something about a car when it's a bonding moment with everyone, especially with guys. It's just to me, it's in our DNA. And I know with everyone, with how society is, it's, everything has to be electric. Everything has to be clean energy and all that stuff. Mm. Screw that, man. Work on something where you get dirty and you smell the fumes and don't sniff the fumes. Just don't get too close to the exhaust. I hitch up a, a trailer to a truck and I'm like, I can't. This is crazy. But there's just, I don't know. It's just something about working on cars, being around guys who talk about cars. It's just, it's a bonding thing. That's what it mm -hmm. is. It's, whether it be racing cars, um, whatever it is, it's it's fun. I I don't know. I dig it. That's just me. Good father son thing too. I find like when I oh, was yeah. there, I'm watching the car with dad and showing him showing me stuff when I was a kid. You know, it was always a moment with the father and son could do too. So yeah. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. And go. did you see the last episode of uh, uh, of the first season of Grand Tour when Richard Hammond crashed that electric car? Yeah. 
Yeah, and oh. remember they said the next season, they said the first thing they said was, uh, well, Hammond pointed out that uh, it took them, was it eight days before they could finally put out the uh, put out the fire? Because what happened was each battery got hot enough that it ignited the next battery just as the uh, the, the uh, just as the first that previous battery uh, battery fire died down. But then it ignited the next yeah. one, and the next one would take about a day for that to go through. So yeah, yeah no, no. stupid. Yeah, for the no, whole family. I, yeah. Like, do I hate electric vehicles? Eh, I'm iffy on them, but they're, the tech is not there yet. The batteries are too dangerous. They don't have it. For, they got yeah. a lot of work to do on that. Way too much work. Still a lot more, yeah. Yeah, yeah, a lot of more to do on that. Uh, they, they, isn't it by 2030 they want electric cars only? Yeah, they want to do all. <laughs> it's yeah, never going to I know. It's the dumbest thing ever. In Alberta, yeah, good. Minus 50. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, Steve, if I have a bonding yeah. moment, if I, and, and I, I'd like your opinion, is what we did illegal or not? And it is a guy's bonding moment. It was with my brother and two of our best friends whom we were living with in Whistler Ski Resort. And when we go out to the clubs at, at Whistler Ski Resort at night, we, we go to the community parkade behind below the conference center, and you park in the very bottom level. Because in the morning, when you come to get your car, because you leave it there, because you don't drive drunk, so you leave it there, but you leave it on the bottom floor, because the parking dude, he starts at the top floor, and so you have until about 10.30 in the morning to get sober and to come and get your car before he gets down to the bottom level. <laughs> so we're walking up to we're walking up to, through the parkade levels uh, to, to, to go to the clubs, and I don't know why, but one of our buddies sees this Cadillac and just checks, and the doors are all open. And it wasn't my idea. I did not smoke weed at the time. <laughs> we all get in the car. Right. I don't know whose car it is. In the bottom level of the parkade. And they pulled out doobies. And we hotboxed. We didn't touch a thing. We didn't touch his glove box. We did not touch a thing. We hotboxed <clears throat> the shit out of his car. And then carried on to the club. And I... <laughs> is that illegal? Um... Break and enter, I believe. <laughs> Even if you didn't technically it, break. It, it, mm, I'm not a law enforcement. I don't recommend doing it, depending <laughs> on where you're at. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I think I would say yes. I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know. What if he so, liked it though? Yeah, he came back and. Oh wow! <laughs> it's Whistler Ski Resort after all. That's true. Yeah. Oh Whistler, my yeah. god! That's a very good point. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and back, dude. Bro, bro, <laughs> did you smoke weed? You must be too queer. <laughs> <laughs> but we're gonna get into. I like this conversation. It's like an open conversation. <laughs> Just having fun. Mm -hmm. But um, since I don't have the intros or anything, we're going to get don't into... Don't spend money on cheap automotive tools. If you're going to get a socket there set there, go. work on your own cars. Don't spend money on cheap tools. Yeah, no. Yeah, can invest in good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Be smart, man. Don't get the nicest thing. Who? Here's the other thing. Like, if you live in a city... <laughs> Or you're focused on, like, if you want to date someone, and women, I don't think, have a real big issue with this, because, guys, we don't, like, it's like, <laughs> if a girl asks us out, and we're like, yeah, and she comes, picks us up, it's like, we don't care what the car looks like. We're like, hey, we're going on a date. All right, that's cool. What are the odds if someone asks me? That's me. Like, I don't care. But, guys, don't, don't. If you focus everything else on like what your car is going to look like, how to impress a girl, just rent the car. Like, mm. just do that. But don't spend your money buying a car that's like, hey, I have a Lamborghini. She's going to be impressed. Um, if she's impressed by that, run away because she's only caring about the money and all this stuff. Like, I remember I had a 19, I remember I had a 1980s Audi. Door handle on the passenger side didn't work. 
I had to open it from the driver's side. If a girl actually stepped foot into that car and was like, all right, where are we going? I knew she didn't care what the car looked like. It was just point A to point B kind of thing. Um, that's the thing. As I think as you get older, you don't really care. Like at the point you're like, whatever, I own a, let's say, Geo Metro. Like the floor's gone. I use my feet as the brakes. I'm Flintstone. <laughs> like if the chick gets into it, into the car and be like, all right, where we're we going, like you're good because she doesn't care about what the car is. And I know a lot of guys focus all that on, but we're going to get into the tip of the hat. Usually there's a whip sound. That sounded wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So tip of the hat is where society doesn't like men really let's be honest we all like no they're yeah, trying to no, make right. star wars all whamming and stuff no, but um no i pick a name out and we go around the table and we give a positive about that person and some people if you don't know the person's name it's okay move on there's no there's no harm in that we don't judge on that um if you don't, if you're, I know Andy, when I had a few names, they're like, I just don't like the guy. Cool. That's it. If you're like, I don't like the guy, that's cool. Um, up next is. Better not be John Mellencamp. <laughs> no, it's not that guy. Oh, crap. Hold up, man. I got some stories Michael. on him. But it's a guy named Michael. My handwriting's really bad. So I'm Grizzly gonna... Adams. We should add Grizzly Adams. Yeah, Dan Haggerty. Yes, I'm yes, Dan Haggerty. This. Yes, his beard was formidable. Oh, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah. He was friends okay, with bear. So Come on. What about Here's ZZ Top? Did you not have ZZ Top in there, like as one? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm gonna get once I run out of the names, I'll put new names in. Um, I'm gonna butcher the guy's name, his last name. It's Michael Bean. He's in Michael Terminator. Bean. Oh, Michael no, Bean. No. Yep. Cool. That's such a weird last name. All right. He's got a. Uh, he's got a beard. No, we're not talking about beards. Oh. oh, oh okay. Never mind. Never mind. Oh, he's gonna be yeah. right, right, right. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Spider Man is. ZZ Top. <laughs> if you're talking so, beards, you're talking ZZ Top. Andy. What is something that is masculinely positive about Michael Bean? Bean? He can't be reasoned with. He can't be bargained with. And he absolutely will not <laughs> stop ever. Yeah. There, you, there you go. Uh, Canadian Spider-Man. Do you know who we're talking about? Uh, Kyle Reese. Yeah, I think the original so. original Kyle Reese. He, he, Johnny you Ringo. Know what? Um, Johnny Ringo sometimes... Yeah, absolutely. Um, sometimes he was really good in that movie. Uh, he really honestly thought that he was a human. Turns out he wasn't. Spoiler alert. Um, so human? he was really good at deluding himself. And sometimes as a man, if if you're in a desperate situation, uh, you have to delude yourself. And I look up to him because he mastered that. Uh, you know, he, he really thought he was human. Turns out he wasn't. Yeah, uh, self delusion is an important quality for men to have. You know, especially if you married the wrong woman or. Hmm. Amen. Uh, Rod. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My feelings on Michael Ban. Well, <clears throat> again, I he really handled the uh, uh, handled the role in Terminator uh, very cromulently. Uh, very. Very unbelievably, yeah, Andy, <laughs> that's the Terminator description, but it also described him very, very easily. Uh, I'll bet nobody even remembers this, but uh, if you look at his performance on, uh, on the V TV series, then you'll be like, that dude, uh, that dude knows his shit, both acting and just from the way his character was uh, played in V. Mm -hmm. That's all I can. That's all I got all right. to say about that. Our uh, Tom. 
Yeah, I don't know much about him personally and stuff. Like you said, the Terminator, who's also an alien. Uh, <laughs> I liked him in Aliens, so um, just like you said. Yeah, that's oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, just I liked his roles. He knows how to play his roles well, you know, and stuff. And speaking of cars, I'm on a main street. Um, but yeah, no, you had a park always... car. <laughs> But yeah, no, I mean, I, again, I don't know much about him per se, uh, but I've admired his work. Like I, Terminator, I love to see. It. I love them all except for the last one. But yeah, no, but um, no, he did good there, and, and he was good in Aliens. So it's so I know a bunch of people that worked with him, mm. not for acting, for like makeup and all that stuff. They've all told me he's a very humble guy. He's just there to have fun. Um, I know when we do tip of the hat, we do a lot of actors and sometimes politicians. Um, the thing about Michael is he's very humble with what he does. Mm -hmm. He's that's the thing I think a lot of guys need to understand is being humble. It's we're not going to be the Matt McConaughey, the Tom Cruise, all this stuff. Like those are dreams. Like we can accomplish that. Like. <clears throat> The thing about Michael is he's like, I know my place. My job is this. There's Tom Cruise, there's Matt McConaughey, there's Denzel Washington, all those guys. Way up there on the tippy top. Yeah. We can get there. That's not a problem. Like you can get there with, with your work, with what you're doing. It's just don't just be humble with what you're what you're dealing with now. And I think with him, it's just like I'm this type of person. I would just want to be humble. My job is acting, entertain people. That's it. And I think when people see that with celebrities or people in the spotlight, it's we respect that. Like you get the guy from Reacher, he's opened up his mouth on social media about cops and all this stuff. I'm like, you're mm -hmm. you're an idiot. Like your demographic I know is not going to like it. And it's all turning on him. Alan Richardson, I think is his name. And, hear that. and yep. he He's said a lot of stupid of things. Good. The, the thing, what separates him and Michael is Michael really never talked about what political climate is going on. It's he knew his place. He just wanted to have fun acting. It's it's fun to act. It is. It's fun to be on set and do all that stuff. It's kind of cool. I've done it before. It's it's a lot of blast. But when you get to the point where it's like, I want to voice my opinion, we don't care. Like, in the end, when a man wants to voice his opinion, sometimes it doesn't care. Like, that's the sad thing is society doesn't allow us to voice our opinion, and yeah. so we become numb to the idea. And so when you voice your opinion, we don't care. Like, I don't care what, what, like, whatever job it is, I don't care what your political views are. Your job is your job. Don't, don't do that <laughs> stuff. That's a little tangent right there. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I almost, I almost went on a rant right there. Uh, next up. That's a good one, if though. I, if I can, well, thank you. Ooh. Okay. This is, this is my favorite. Danny McBride. Hmm. Do any of you guys know who Danny McBride is? If not, I no. can refresh you. Yeah, I, I, yeah, he you was in me. grade twelve with me. He sat next to me. He was terrible at math. You knew Danny McBride? He's probably what? not the same dude. No, it's probably <laughs> not. Okay. I was gonna be like, how the fuck do you know Danny McBride? Well, who are you talking about? I was comedian. I don't. I see him, yeah. I don't know much about him, but yeah, I don't know. Is he from New Brunswick? He's always been, no. No, he's always no, been no. third banana yeah. in movies. Yeah. yeah so you little... guys, so have you seen Choppy Thunder, Canadian Spider-Man? There. Yes. So it's the guy, the detonator guy. Have you seen Eastbound and Down? No. It's a series. Have you seen, have you seen Righteous Gemstone? Pineapple Express. It's, so. it's, I, I'll, I'll go uh, maybe last, and I'll okay. Uh, we'll go. I, we'll make you I, go I've last. Seen some of those movies. All right. So Tom, 
What's Honestly, something masculine about Danny McBride? I'm with him. I don't know much about him. I mean, okay. like Tropic Thunder, I've seen They're good, but I don't know much about him. He's he's funny. I've seen. I know, I know know who he is, but I don't know much about him. But he is funny though. I'd like. But like you said, he's a lower. He always plays the mid level characters so usually in films. All right, yeah, Rod, I feel like I think yeah. you know. Oh yeah, no. I mean, like what's something? I, what's something positive about Danny McBride? I wish Gary was no. on this show. You know, I mean, a lot of people, and this is funny to come from a guy who's like in shape, but uh, I mean, I'm sure I see the, I see the appeal of him in that a lot of people look at him and he's like, you know, I mean, like, you know, he, uh, he's a third banana. He's the uh, heavy set dude in your, uh, in your party that, you know, like always makes some jokes and like, he's always really funny, you know, and in terms of that, um, I saw him in Up in the Air with George Clooney and Andrew, Anna Kendrick, where they played uh, a team of uh, well, two people who randomly flew around across America, and they were hired by other companies in order to fire people. And the whole reason behind that was simply because then, then like behind their job, was then was then the company can't be held responsible because they didn't fire them. The uh, these people did. It it's a really good movie. I highly recommend it. By the way, uh, and Danny McBride plays um, this guy who falls in love with George Clooney's. Uh, sister and George Clooney is a serial uh, serial bachelor as in like he absolutely and he, he makes a really 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 good case for bachelorhood especially mm -hmm. when you find it especially after what happens to him in the movie but hell yeah yeah and uh, Jen, um, Danny McBride you know he's going to marry um, Clooney's sister but then he literally gets cold feet at the la at the last minute and again this is this is one of the things that makes McBride such a good actor it's like he's he played it so convincingly you know and he was just, he didn't want it you know but then like George Clooney of all people well, <laughs> even his sister even Clooney's sister was just like you're gonna go talk to him and she's just kind of like, oh god this you know but like no um, uh, Danny uh, George Clooney <laughs> set McBride straight and just decided yeah i'm gonna you know okay i'm, I'm gonna marry her you know and like he he came up really good convincing convincing her. but like uh and all all the other things too like i said i mean i see his appeal too in terms of like he's as i said he's the third banana who's not always in uh, not uh, not really in shape but like he always brings a laugh whenever you see him on the screen and like yeah tip my hat to him because yeah it's always yeah. nice to have that third banana who can th uh, throw in that uh, throw in throw in that hilarious crack when nobody when the whole room is silent mm. yeah it's one of the or andy do you know who danny mcbride is oh that uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's very funny he is he's a very funny guy uh he um he's one of those actors who's not afraid to take like those parts that make you look like a jackass. Uh, yeah. But he, he's in it for the laugh, and that's that's what counts. Yeah. It's – so Tom and Kanae and Spider-Man, do you know – did you do enough research real quick to know who he is? Oh, I, Pineapple Friggin' Express. Oh, yeah. There I, you go. There you go. If weed <laughs> is involved, Canadian Spider will know. Same thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this – yeah, this guy. Um, you know what? I, I I've been guilty of this in in my twenties and even thirties. Is um sometimes always having to have the spotlight, and, and you know, as YouTubers, we all like attention, of course. Um, and, and I was guilty of that of always having to. I don't to, due to no trauma or anything and nothing i didn't need attention for any other reason than i just really like being the center of attention he and and as i've gotten older it is so important to let uh to a lot of times let other people have their moment have their time in the sun and do not feel the need to uh you know one up them or, all right like you, i was or, saying you know, yeah, <laughs> exactly, Andy. <laughs> like you don't have the need to to go any bigger or harder, and and he's perfectly suited to his role. 
there. He went and gone. But I agree uh, with him there. He 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 does that mid character level character well, and he he doesn't try to overstep anything, but he does bring good laughs. So he is very funny. So the thing, if you guys haven't seen Righteous Gemstones, it's on HBO or Max or whatever you want to call it. Mm. Um, I'm waiting for Peacock to just call the streaming service cock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting. Um, Righteous Gemstones. I showed my wife the first episode. She didn't like it. It's not her. Not it's not her cup of tea. She's like Jesus, dude. There's a guy who's like he shows everything in the first scene, and I totally forgot about it. I was like, <laughs> oh. Anyways, um, the thing about Danny McBride is not because I think he's a Mason. I think he is, but it's he's a guy. I can relate with where I can hang out with and just, he just wants to make people laugh. Hmm. That's his thing. It's, he doesn't care about politics or anything. He just wants to make people laugh. And I think when, if you can hang out with a group of guys and because I guarantee you, then we deal with a lot of stress and a lot of depression and a lot of crazy things in the world. And if you can get one guy like if Gary and Gary, Andy, and I hung out, which we've done a couple times, if Andy he would crack a joke, and if Gary and I, I know right, shocker, and if Gary and I are just fed up and just we're just not, life sucks. Andy, if Andy made a joke and we laughed, that laugh goes a long ways, and guys need that. It's for me, I'm more of like, hey, I'm going to be the dumb comedic person. I'm going to say something really crazy and stupid without around a bunch of guys. And sometimes some of the guys are going to get it. Some guys will be like, that's kind of stupid. I was like, that's the whole point. And it's because guys, we're just so bent up and we have so much tension that it's just we need to kind of relax and just let go of what the world's bringing to us. It's. For me, it's working, it's building houses, I'm stressed out. I just don't wanna, if I come home, I don't wanna talk to anyone, I don't wanna hang out with anyone, I just need 20 minutes of just relaxing. Like, my wife came in the other day and something that Danny McBride would say, and she did it in a very low manly voice and it was the funniest thing ever. And I said, thank you very much for doing that because that was, that relieved a lot of tension, just, just laughing. And with Danny McBride is like seeing him in Tropic Thunder. That was the first time I ever saw him. And I was like, this guy's funny. Like he's genuinely funny where he's like, I want to make people around me laugh. Sometimes you guys need another man to make people laugh, whether, whatever this situation is, whether it's stupid smart joke or whatever it's just enjoy those types of guys because they're going to make your day a lot easier like when for example whenever i hang out whenever i work with gary i do random noises and i just just to see gary chuckle or have gary um have a laugh a smile or laugh or whatever it is and he's told me he's like your random voices make me laugh because it's so weird. Like if we're welding something, I'm like, do 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 do, and it's just like in an odd situation. It to me, it's like how how can I make this person enjoy the moment a little bit? And Danny McBride is the same way, hmm. where it's like I just want to make people enjoy things. So if you're hanging out with a bunch of guys who are just so stressed out about every single little thing, crack a jad, <coughs> crack a dad joke. Because I guarantee you, like my father-in-law, he'll do a dad joke to me. And I think it's the funniest thing ever because they're stupid jokes. But they're just funny. Like just every guy needs – a group of guys needs a guy who's going to be a, a comedic person, whether it's stupid or not. Like I get it. I say a lot of dumb things. I get my words mixed up, whatever. I'm a laughing joke. I set the jokes up. Let's, let's have fun. Like it's – I think that's the thing with society is guys we don't have that outlet and we don't we don't 
it we're always has to be serious. Have fun, man. It's it's not all you don't have to be all serious. You're not trying to take over the world. Just have fun. Crack a few jokes, whether they're dark humors or not. Um, up next is ooh, I like this one. Sean Patrick Flannery. Do any of you guys know? I can tell you, I can say one movie and you guys wouldn't know exactly who I'm talking about. I would. Indiana Jones. Well, he wasn't in any. Oh my Indiana gosh. Jones movies. Yes. Young Indiana but, Jones. Yeah, in the yeah, the TV series. Or yeah, the series. So he was in um also Boondock Saints. One of my favorites, yep. Yeah. yeah. And they're making a third oh, yeah. now, too. Oh, thank God. I hope the director's on high on cocaine when he makes this movie. Him and Norman are getting together. It's a kid. So, Rod, what's something masculine about Sean? He is. The, they should have. Disney was not thinking. Well, they're never thinking. They should oh. have brought him in to do young Indiana. Well, you know, future Indiana Jones. You know, or like bring him in. And like, boom, there you go. Well, I mean, because he's old enough now to be Indiana Jones, like, and just have him replace Harrison. Because then, you know, I mean, you know, you, you could have Harrison actually, like, in the rocking chair and just, you know, looking through his old stories, <laughs> old diary, you know? Yeah, you know, I mean, and like you know, Sean Patrick Flannery, he, he's he's a good manly man. And like, he never, I don't think he got his fair shake in Hollywood, too, you know? I mean, I think maybe it's just simply because I don't. Well, just that. I don't think he got his fair shake. I will say, like, <clears throat> the uh, romance Dick in me uh, saw him in, uh, he played in uh, in kind of a uh, Hallmark movie. Uh, I vaguely, I just can't remember what the hell is, uh, I believe it's, uh, but it stars, uh, but it stars uh, Buffy, uh, Sarah Michelle Gellar, that is. Mm. Uh, and, um, uh, she played a witch, and she caused him to fall in love with her, or something like that. But then ultimately, the spell, spell fails. But then, like, he falls in love with her anyways. Which, why wouldn't you? <laughs> you know, and like, it's anyway. It's a it's a really really good movie. You know, and like, and I'm just kind of like, man, he's he's got that leading man status. Like, you know, I mean, like, you know, and no, I, I'm like, I've got a few. I've got a few of the old Indiana, Indiana Jones. Hey, hang on a second. Uh, Indiana Jones. Huh, look at that. The old school, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Indiana Jones. Uh, you know, and th that was him. That's him. You know, and uh, uh, no, I, uh, I love the guy. He just never got a fair shake, and let's hope we can see that in Boondock Saints. Hmm. Andy, but, I think. Yeah, he's um, he's. It makes you wonder, like, when you get a when you're young and you get a big part like that, <clears throat> and you've got such big shoes to fill. Uh, yeah. I wonder how much that holds you back in your career, because now it's like you know, if it's sort of like a uh, a no win situation. He's fighting back. You have some people that will like embrace it and want you to do well with it. And there's other people that will just identify you with that part. And then I, I because it's so high profile, you sort of get pigeonholed with it. And I think that's kind of what happened with him. He was um, uh, stuck in that uh, in that limbo where, you know, if you cast him in something, are your is your project going to be overshadowed by the talk of what this guy did before? Um, but anyway, uh, great, uh, competent actor, uh, always enjoyed his performances. Um, I mean, I remember he did that uh movie Powder, which was kind of peculiar when you like oh. it's it at first it starts off, but then you start thinking about this, it's like you know, he's awfully pale and hairless and stuff like that and you get brian singer directing it and it's like yeah there's a little <laughs> something weird there like you know 
I think it was <laughs> singer that directed it. But um, but it was fun. It was a good movie. Uh, uh, but I I've always enjoyed his performances, and um, and really at the end of the day, uh, most importantly with actors, just act, put a performance on, and let us enjoy your your show. Yeah. The worst thing an actor can do is take away their mystique. It's kind of like comic book characters. There's certain characters that you should never, they should never give given Wolverine an origin story. Just let it be a mystery. That would have been better. Hey, Spider-Man. Spider-Man. How do you feel about Sean Patrick Flannery? Uh, Boondock Saints. Oh. That, when I'm asked what one of my favorite movies are, what, what my favorite movies are, um, I, I'm constantly forgetting that movie. And um, it's because of his acting. Absolutely. Um, as a man, when, you're, when your back is up against the wall, and, and I realize he's an actor and he's portraying this, but I don't know him in person and I've lost his phone number. Uh, as an actor, he portrayed this guy that man, when your back is up against the wall, and and you know, and you know, as Vin Diesel says, family, you know, um, you uh, there's certain things that are expected of you as a man that are not expected as uh, of you uh, as a as a woman as a as a female member of the family. You have other expectations that. You know, God knows, I don't want to pass a cannonball out my ass. So we have other <laughs> expectations. And and Sean Patrick Flannery, he's a perfect example of, of when push comes to shove, when when something needs to be done, especially involving family, you do it. And uh, he portrayed that character. Un- and I'd like to think that you couldn't portray that that effectively if if you didn't have a little bit of of you in of that in you uh, you know um yeah that's what i have to one of the most amazing uh films i've, I've seen and holy shit it makes me just want to go out with a pipe somewhere yeah uh <laughs> i you know uh is are hey, they redoing it rod is there a second are, are they redoing it no, yes, they're doing they a third boondocks. Well, Thirty second. One. Yeah. Yeah. I've you seen can, two. You can bypass the second one. It's okay. It's not great. The, it's the better. Than, I'm gonna argue yeah. that point with you, but I'll wait it's Better than the Highlander two. <laughs> you might have a point. Highlander what? There's only one Highlander. <laughs> Yeah, there is there's only there's one Highlander. What are you talking about? How much we did? Sorry, you Andy. <laughs> Andy, you're absolutely right. <laughs> I like how he's talking to him. Yes, uh, Tom, did you go? Oh yeah, no, I'm, I'll I was I'll do now. Um, but, well, I'll just add on to him. Boondock Saints is one of my all-time favorites, and I'm sorry, I like to. To me, it added to one. It it, just, it was a continuation of just a all great right. story. And the brothers, I mean, they're real life friends too. Him and Norman, I guess. And like I said, that's why they're getting together to do the third film. So, and it's I guess it is happening. So I'm like, thank goodness. So um, just just a guy that doesn't really say much outside. He keeps his thing, like you said, just like um, the other gentleman, keep, you know, doesn't let his opinions known as much um, that I've ever known. Um, excellent actor. I, I forgot he did Powder. I forgot about that. And he mentioned it. Oh, Jeez, that was him. Yeah, I was like, wow, that that was a different role, but a really something out there. That was a really interesting role. But Boondock Saints, to me, is one of the most underrated films maybe ever. It's just so... The, the, the brothers standing up. Then they find out the dad. I'm not going to give a spoilers away. If you haven't seen it, go see it. It's, it's been 30 film. years. It, true, but still, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> but such a, it, it's a piece of art, in my opinion. It really is. And it's just so, so good of a story. And his character, he portrays it well. Like the guy's guy, the brothers looking after each other, no matter what, they don't care, you know, and it just they'll do anything to have each other's backs. You know, and just, oh, I can't, I could go on. Yeah, no, no, just excellent actor. Yeah. So the thing about Sean is we might do another tip of the hat. Um, <coughs> the thing about Sean is I saw the latest movie he did, Nefurious, Nefarious, Nefarious, I think it is. 
Nefarious. Where he played, nefarious. Where he played a demon and and I I DM'd him. This is when I had my own Twitter, and he's like, I'll send you a copy. Him and I were talking. We nice. were first name basis. Oh. And not that means anything at all. I just yeah. he he told me he's like, Hey, I'll send you a copy. I was like, No, I want to buy I want to rent or buy the DVD and help promote your stuff. And I saw that movie. I saw Sean in a way. I love Boondock Saints. It's one of my favorite movies. Mm. But watching his latest movie, I saw him be who he really is. He's a guy who takes his job serious. And I know a lot of, like, on this show, we are like, take your job serious, be humble, don't be arrogant. If you're arrogant, I kick you off. The mo it's that's a the thing about men is we can get carried away. Some men not, but the moment you're humble and you're like, look, this is my job. This is what I want to do. That's when you become who you really are. The moment you become arrogant and just look at me, all this stuff, like, oh, I'm of I'm of some importance. Here's the thing. Each and every one of us, you, Tom, Rod, Canadian Spider-Man, Jeff, Andy, we're just a speck in this hmm. world. Yeah. We're nobody. But here's the thing. There's someone who looks up to us as some importance that we can make a change. And with Sean, you get that a little bit. And it's it's really cool to see how John – and just talking to Sean – I know I just said John. I meant Sean. <laughs> and, and just talking to him, DMing him, and just having conversations with him. He is so – I know there's some people who are not religious, which is okay. That's the beauty about the show is I don't care what your religious background is. Hmm. Just talk about experience. But just talking to him about Christ and talking about God and just actually, like, picking his brain. And he's willing to, on Twitter or X – just actually answer questions to fans like he he really does care what fans think and that's the thing about like people who are in the spotlight it's we don't care about what the fans think you look at the star wars star trek whatever it is hmm. rebel moon whatever hollywood is doing now they don't care they care about how much money they're making yeah. but when you get down to like the tom cruise sean the Anyone else who is lower end, I'm not saying Tom Cruise is lower end, but it's <laughs> they care about what the fans think and they care about what people think. Mm. It's like, am I doing this right? Like, if anyone who has not seen Sean's latest movie, Nefarious, go check it out. It's such a yeah. powerful movie. Oh, I watched it with my wife. My wife was like, even Jim Caviezel, he's like the top dog of like, what it is to actually make something where it's like the fans really watch. I remember I watched Sound of Freedom and my wife's in tears and she's like, oh my gosh. I was like, yeah, this is true. And it's the same thing with Sean. He really values what people, not what people think of him, but what people, like what he says, he values that. And I think for me, that's a learning thing. I have to learn that. It's like whether I'm on Twitter, if anyone at, you guys know me on Twitter. I will go after someone. Like this morning, I got a, a DM of like, hey, go after this person about um, I have a friend, a really good friend who's gay. And this person is like, any straight male conservative, is, they don't care about gay people. It's like I jumped in because the guy asked me, it's like, hey, can you jump in on this? And I was like, I don't care if you're whatever sexual orientation is. I don't care. Like that's you. I don't care. Don't clump us into any of the stuff. Like, yeah. It, You're not feeding the trolls, are you? Don't feed the trolls. That's the other thing. I am <laughs> yeah, a troll. Yeah. But it's... <laughs> don't feed the trolls. Nutshell, yeah. Don't connect... What Kenny Spider-Man said is don't feed the trolls. But also, I think for me, when looking at Sean Flannery is... Watch what you say. Think about mm -hmm. what you say. I have to learn that 
for me. I learn everything on this show. I always have to be like, all right, I learn new things about this show with everyone. Just because I do this show doesn't mean I know everything. I learn each episode. I'm learning something new about myself. And that's what's cool. It's like be adaptable. Oh, yeah. We're going to do one more name. Let me pull all this stuff out. Well, while you're looking for that, you're how old? Yes. You know how old are you, if you mind me asking? You're what, 39, 38? Not that old. Well, okay. <laughs> well I, I'll, I'll I just know say. I have it. gray hairs. I know I have gray hairs, Tom. No, no. The point is, I'm 51. <laughs> and I'm still. You're not going to stop learning. My doctor's just going like black. You're not going to stop learning. I have a beard yet. Dead in the ground. You're always learning new things about yourself, new mm -hmm. things about the world around you until you're dead in the ground. That's always been my No, that's point. an edict of stoicism to yeah, always yeah. be learning. Always yeah, be learning. Always. You never know well, everything. You to answer your question, I'm 36. I'll be 37. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Marcus Aurelius. Yeah. Damn, yeah, he's just a kid, brother. It's like almost got 20 years on the reason why I did this show is to help guys understand, hey, mm. there's nothing out there for you guys. So you I'm going to build, box, I'm going to so. create something that helps you guys get attached to something. And, and I know amazing. there's, yeah, it's, mm. their society hates men. We look at it in the movies. A lot of guys who watch the show, they're all in the pop culture stuff. They see how that's going. It's like, look, what this show is, it's about you guys. And I learned a lot from you guys. And how I look at Sean is he's humble. And he's like, I, I have my job. I know what it is. And if you guys, I know so, Snow Dub is very much onto this. And I eventually watched it. And I was like, I, I text um, Snow Dub. And I was like, dude. This movie is amazing because you see how he actually values what it is to be a man. And knowing that they're doing Boondock Saints 3, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll do one more. We'll do one more, more. Even though this is a not your typical Rank or not Rank or Steve, Manorama episode. Um, I got a few car things after uh, before, after this, if you don't mind, for you too. But yeah, I don't know that person's name, and I wrote it down. Are, are they too old <laughs> to do the like our Boondock Saints? Are they too old? Like Steve, how old are you? Too old to be an action star as a role model for men, as an action star, okay, physical. Cool. Well, look at Norman Reedus is still huge. So Clint Eastwood is a joke. Any one of us would. Keep what? His ass well, to say. he's like no. one hundred and ten. No, no, he's 93. No, Did no. Did you just say he's a joke? How about Chuck Norris? Ah. At this age, is if he tries to do, like, when Harrison Ford went and tried to do a oh, physical I role, see. it's a joke. No, no, no I don't. He's an idol. He's Eric. Clint Eastwood is an idol. But if he went and tried to do, it would be the same as a 90-pound girl trying to beat up a 300-pound man. Like, I'm sorry. Okay, after I feel like you. Stallone right. and Expendables. He's older, but that was what a good age. age. So that's the question. What age? Um, it depends it on depend? your durability, mm, your yeah. flexibility. Like if let's okay. So here's a better. Stallone is the worst example. Really, I like he the Expendables because he he jacked up his back. I will say this: yeah. if you get, let's say Jackie Chan or Jet Li oh, to come back. They're in their what sixties, close to seventies. Yeah. Andy Masters to like, oh my gosh, here we go. Early sixties. Early sixties. If you're if you're fit and you've been training your body at a, that age, yeah, I don't. If you pace yourself you, enough, yeah. It, yeah, if you if you understand your body and you train yourself, yeah. If you're Stallone. Yeah, he came out and said, guys, don't do your own stunts. Like, he actually had a lot of damage when he did the first Expendables, and he damaged himself. Like, he can't do a lot of things. I actually watched Expendables. So I watched Rebel Moon the other night, and I told my wife, I was like, I this is dumb. 
really? I, it's beautifully filmed, but there's way too many characters. And my wife's like, yeah. So we ended up renting Expendables 4, which is just a worst movie ever, but it has Stallone in it. And I know my wife. Hey, guys, knows. I got to run. I got to help my kid out. All right. Take care, man. Thanks for joining. Have a good one, man. Bye, Andy. My, my wife knows how I feel about Stallone. And I I love Stallone. I we, I sat when we got Netflix, I was like, we're watching Stallone's fuck Arnold Schwarzenegger. I am a huge Stallone fan. Expendable Four is the dumbest movie. One of the dumbest. And but I it's it's okay because it's, it's fun. It's, it's terrible. Fun. It's it's bad. <laughs> but I think when people when guys like you have to look at to answer your question, Kidding <coughs> Spider Man, and we'll get to this guy's name is are they trained to keep their body going? Like, can I have an example? One example, yes, quickly? please. Um, this will be pro wrestling, but it's still your live acting. Ah, fuck. Yeah, no. sorry, Sting. Stone Cold. <laughs> Steve Is Gordon, Stone Cold? Sting, Who? Sting. Was wrestling oh. up until he just retired oh. this year. Sting, Steve Borden, 64. No, no, well, he did come back with AEW dub and had good matches. Oh, I was gonna was say really, Rod Thunderheart, he was really killing it. Like, wow, and he went out, he officially retired this year. Good, okay. not too hurt, just like, but he he was tagging with Darby, a younger guy, so he could pace himself. But to me, <laughs> as long as you were okay, and like you said, Keanu Reeves, a perfect example, you were about to say, he's well, he's well, almost 60 now, if not already. And yep. he's 59. Yeah. He's, and he's, no, he's the top. Of, yeah, he is. Yeah, he's almost 60. And he's a top, one of the best in the business right now. So, yeah. Like, one of the questions I have um, in, um, in Rumble, because we're streaming on both Rumble and YouTube right now, uh, Franco De Jefe. See, I got it right. See, I spent a year getting his name wrong. Franco de Jefe seven said, "You guys have my <laughs> utmost respect and admiration. You guys help me learn how to be a real man and have some values. So whatever happens, don't quit this show, please. This ain't this show ain't going anywhere, baby. Hey, we have that no makes you feel good knowing you can do stuff like that, doesn't it? We're just telling going, you stories about our experience. Like we're not That's experts cool. on. No, no, we just we're we just live. telling." Like All right. we tell you what we did wrong, <laughs> and if you can learn from that. <laughs> oh, buddy, wait till you get. Oh, there's some mess. All right, so the next one, we'll end it off on this one. All right, unless we pull up some more. I don't know. The wife's not home, so I can keep the show going. There you go. Oh, All we're right. going. Dude, yeah, I got a I car thing for you at the end, if you don't mind. A car thing at the end. We're getting into the rum, then. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm not laughs> what have you done? What have you done? <laughs> All right, what's your car thing? Okay, well, you said you love the the uh, the, the DeLorean, right? Yeah. Now, have you ever heard of the Bricklin? Car. Have you heard what? of the Bricklin? Very similar to the, the Bricklin. Oh, yeah. The it's on Bricklin. No, he's not heard of that. I'm yes, surprised because it's a well, yeah. It was made in my Brunswick. hometown. Yeah, in St. John. Yes, actually. In I know what it is. I had a friend that had it. I've been in yeah. it. It's yeah. Tricky cool. Dicky. <laughs> It's but yeah, it was made it here in St. John and stuff. So yeah, it's just it's that kind car of history. doesn't make any sense. No, I know it doesn't. It was it, it only makes no two, sense. Two, I two had a buddy. Years. His dad had it. He's like, "This is my dream car." I sat in the passenger side. That car makes no sense. At no, all. <laughs> it's but a yeah, stupid, stupid car. Now you guys are making fun about supercars and stuff, but the Austin Martin Valkyrie is the most beautiful piece of art. Like I gotta hear I, that is a dream car. If I was disposable income, that would be the car I would own nowadays. Oh, Austin not Martin's the Bugatti, the, the Valkyrie, the Austin Martin. Nope. Just, oh. oh, that is a nice one. Steve, do you know you, what? Have you seen the Simpsons episode where the fella comes to town and sells the town of Springfield on a monorail? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's basically what happened to New Brunswick with the Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. there's a oh, documentary on it actually. And sold us to build the Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> and that's yeah. why it made no sense. You yeah, said there's a documentary no you can find that's... on YouTube on it. It's yeah. actually so basically... do you guys do you guys know that the Bugatti engine is a Volkswagen? Yes, actually. I oh, somehow I remember told... hearing it somewhere. I told Gary Ambrosia this, and he's like, 
what we were talking about cars today and he didn't know yeah, yeah. <laughs> he didn't know what the episode were was for tonight and we were talking this morning i was like we were talking about cars and i was like mm-hmm. trucks and all this stuff and i was like you do know that the like supercars they use cheap end engines like volkswagen a dodge or whatever it is he's like what i was like yeah he's like i feel like i've been cheated my entire life I was <laughs> like, yep. so for you wwe's or pro wrestling i should say what do you think the next name is oh, oh, that's fast like man anyway <laughs> spider man who do you think what pro wrestler do i have right here We've done Hulk Hogan. I'm going to say Sweet Daddy Seeky. All right. Rod. He wrestled here in New Brunswick for a while. Huh. Yes, he did. Mm. I don't know. Somehow what that looks like Rambo to me, but like he's not a wrestler. Um, no, this uh, one. Not here. This one. Not here. Up here. Here? <laughs> yeah. Up yeah. Here? Yes. <laughs> so many girls have said, no, don't look there. Look but you- up here. Can I get a closer look at him? You can't see. No. In here, right <laughs> I don't here. think he understands the game. Here. I can't see. It's not I, that, here. You're not this is Rambo. Yeah, this yeah. Is, okay. Yeah, he just can't get a guess. You got to guess. <laughs> yeah, you got to guess. I, what pro wrestler do I have right oh. here? Well, I was going to say Abdullah the Butcher, but I mean, I don't know if he, uh, I don't, I think he's like a too rare of a, uh, like he's too, too obscure of a about. thing. Good so story, I'm, yeah. I'm going to have to go somebody mainstream. Let's go with Andre the Giant. All right. Yes. Tom. Can you give a hint of 80s, 90s, or 2000s? I ain't gonna give any. Damn. Okay. Um, oh, damn. I mean, I want to say Chris Benoit. He was my favorite until he did what he did. So, uh, um, uh, yeah, you took Rambo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, gosh. Muta. I get so many. Um, I don't know. Uh, uh, Stone Cold, Steve Austin. <clears throat> uh, no, it's John Cena. Oh. Oh, oh no God. wonder we can't see him. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rod, what is something masculine about John Cena? Well, number one, just simply his uh, never quit attitude, and num- and of course, obviously, the number one thing is like all the other '80s wrestlers and uh, shit comic book heroes. I mean, that's the f- I'll say that that's the number one thing that. Even when I was a kid, I, I just got, uh, I started like, I wanted to get in shape and I, and like, I ran, I ran the hills, you know, uh, and like, you know, and like, I want, I wanted to be in shape because you look, I mean, John Cena, you look at his physique, it's inspiring. You're just like, yeah, I want that. I want that. You know, like, you know, and so, yeah, I mean, like, Terrible. I'm going to probably just, I'm probably just going to say, <laughs> just going to say his physique. Just, I mean, like he, uh, I mean. Yeah, he's probably had had roids, but I mean, let's face it, he's still like he's still not insanely like insanely muscular, like the biceps bulging out of the uh, uh, out of the arm, like uh, like uh, like a Mister Olympia, some a star or somebody. He's still in he's still in what you would s- still call a fairly good like runner shape, you know. And like, don't no, I'm just gonna say his uh, uh, his physique and like said, never quit attitude. All right, uh, Canadian Spider Man. Yeah, I absolutely I do, and and um, <laughs> it, this might be one of the most important um, lessons for for a, a young man growing up or a young boy wanting to be a man. And following on what Rod said, he doesn't have the biggest muscles. I mean, he'd probably take all four of us down. He's <laughs> Well, not yeah. easily, not easily, but he'd probably he'd be big enough. Um, but he's not the biggest dude. He's not. No. And and, and one yeah. of the most important lessons for for men, uh, getting back to my point, is work with what you have. 
work with what you have and and take with what you take with what you got and and build on it and do better and and don't be limited do not be limited the fact that he is mentioned among the top guys the fact that we're discussing him right now he doesn't have the biggest muscles he doesn't have the most suave but he's working with what he's got and he's attained well done sir he's attained a level i mean the same with each of us we ain't working with the best quality shit but we've done okay for ourselves <laughs> you know and i think that's a lesson uh, to be learned um He's not as big as, as some of those dudes. He he hasn't gone the roid route. And you know what I discovered? Has. When you take steroids, it, it make, your body uh, says, hey, there's already steroids here. I don't need to make as many. So yeah. you don't make as yeah. many. So you have to continue to take them. Yep. No, I don't want I mean, I hey, I, I want to be 300 pounds of muscle. No, actually, I don't. I want to be agile. Fuck that. I still want to be able to <laughs> No, I want as much muscle to the point, but I still want to do handsprings and backflips. So I want to be right. muscular to the point. But John Cena um, doesn't have what other – he's not the most muscular. He's not the most suave guy. He's pretty good looking, but he's not – uh, you know, well, who's the dude that plays Thor? He's not that. Chris dude. Hemsworth. There yeah. you go. Um, he's an attractive looking guy. I mean, good for him. Uh, we, we he makes the best with arena. what he's got. And, and I think every guy, every guy watching, every young man, um, I mean, Jesus, don't listen to me, but in my opinion, uh, you work with what you got. Yeah. Uh, he does it well. Oh, yeah, he's slowly no. crawling into acting too. Well, I think he's excelled now. I'll Maybe. watch him. Oh yeah, like yeah. Fast and the Furious. He's a regular. Well. Oh yeah, yeah. Is he an underdog? I mean, would you consider him an underdog? I mean, no. his biceps are this big. I don't. <laughs> no. I don't so. Well, first no, off, you're Dave, talking is about... he an underdog compared to? Oh, go no, ahead. No, Sorry, no. Tom. I, oh, no, I will no. never cut off another New Brunswicker. Sorry. Thank you, sir. <laughs> um, no, I was just gonna ironic if. Told him because he's a diehard car fan. With well, this is a car episode. He lo he yeah. loves cars. He collects religiously. Here's a guy like you said. He took the best what he got. He almost got fired at first. Then Stephanie heard him on one of the buses one time, and he was rapping in the back because he was good at rapping in college. She said, "Hey, do that as a gimmick." Boom, Thugonomics was born, and then he became this awesome heel star. Boom, and then he became a fit, you know. And then he built on this character. And now he might not be the biggest guy, but strength wise, he rivals Brock Lesnar in strength. Probably one of the, and Mark mm -hmm. Henry. He was one of, yeah. and maybe still is one of the strongest guys in the industry. Like maybe Claudio Cesaro, you know, whatever you call him, and a few others rival, but Sino is strong as a beast. Um, seems humble. Like he never seemed, he, his comedy is like, if you ever seen, he used to do five minute with Cena. It was a comedy thing he did in the early days with WWE. And then his stuff he does online. I still want to see him and Rock do a comedy buddy movie. A cop buddy movie. I think they'd be awesome together. Um, he plugged on, worked hard, and became probably he rival. I think he equals Flair's title runs. And there's a rumor he still might come back for one last title run to beat Ric Flair's record as the most titles held. So that's the only thing he's talked about maybe doing. He's made some big movies now. I mean, he's part of the Fast and Furious franchise, and uh, uh, so yeah, he's like <laughs> he's known to the video game. He's known to the video game world too because. He voices Peacemaker on Mortal Kombat. Oh, well, yeah. He, yeah, exactly. And he's Peacemaker in the series, which I love the Peacemaker character. He does it yeah. to the TV. so good. Oh. And now it's funny. He was in WrestleMania in that special appearance in the Cody versus Roman match. He came out to save him. And uh, sad, oddly enough, he doesn't care. He's got this balding spot in his top. He doesn't care. He lets it go. I mean, he could get the plugs put in. He's like, eh, whatever. I'm balding in the top. Whatever. Hey, he you don't care. talk yeah. about another man's balding spot. Hold the fuck! Hey. Oh, he's off. open about it. He makes fun of it. He likes you fun of it. You just cross the line. You guys, hold up! No, only <laughs> Tom. Do you have a balding spot? No, but I've shaved my head bald. I'll do it again any sometime. I don't mind. Only I... Rod and I have the say of that. <laughs> I'm gonna have to sooner or later. Or and like actually, Lisa said to me too. She's like, "Stop worrying about it. Just shave it." You See, know. You know what? Here's the thing. I will say this. 
when a woman who you're dating or you're with, whoever it is, says, look, just shave the head. She might be right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've learned this is sometimes when you're married, dating, or whatnot, <laughs> guys, we're the dumbest <laughs> yep. when it comes to science. Yeah. <laughs> when your woman says, look, do this, she might be right. Not all the time, but she might be right on some. Would of you let a woman shave your balls, Steve? No. No, no woman's going near that with anything. But yeah, no, <laughs> I don't care who it is. No one's gonna. No. Lorena <laughs> fucking Bobbitt, the only what? woman to actually legitimately own a penis for about twenty minutes. That we know. Anyways, yeah, yeah, yeah. anyways <laughs> but finishing anyways, up on John quickly. Just uh, he, I, yes. I admire the man. He works hard, and um, the the, the his moniker. Um, is actually real because he worked hard, the loyalty, respect, everything. Like he actually did. That was his actual moniker he lived by. And look at him. He's a Hollywood actor now. Now he's not rock level, but he's up there. He's, he's a top guy. He's Hollywood. getting up there. Yeah. And he's, and he's yeah. Still, yeah. And he's still in wrestling. He said, I'm not retired. He said it recently after Manny. He said, you haven't seen the last of me. So he will come back again. So, he, but he's shooting some other stuff with the Peacemaker stuff and everything else. But he said, no, that he might go for the 17th run to beat Ric Flair's record. I don't know, but that's, he could do that. So, so I'm asking in the chat, both Rumble and YouTube, uh, YouTube. what the next topic we would do. I'll get to John Cena soon. Da, 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 da. See what happens when we go old school, Manorama? We do everything old school, baby. How you doing? Oh, man, dude. Yeah, what? What? What ball Do you, you want, want me to fire see? a shotgun off camera? We can do that. <laughs> hold up, uh, hold up, man. Hold up. What do you got? I got a neighbor that I don't like. <laughs> well, we got a phone. I think we all got I one of those. I don't think that'd be a good subject. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> about, yeah, you wouldn't. Um, How to resolve disputes with fiber? <laughs> We'll get, we'll get Tyrone. I mean, Tyrone on. Um, Tyron. The thing about John Cena is he's a fucking idiot when it comes to virtual signaling. But I've seen recent videos where there was a kid who uh, make a wish type thing. And he cares about kids. Oh, yeah, he does. That's the other thing. Good for him. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. He values kids. In the sense of, I'm here. It's like a pro wrestler is. I've watched a lot of sports videos, like especially soccer. Soccer is like or football, whatever country you're in. Soccer or football. Um, the pro uh, athlete, fall down on the ground and grab your knee. Yeah, something like that. What? Um, it's. I just. There's my dog right there. All right, cool. Hi. Um, Hello, puppy. Hi. I know. Hi, puppy. I'm sorry. Is like soccer players, tennis players, even pro wrestlers, they value the kids. Mm. And John Cena, there was a there was a video I watched where you saw him watch a video of a kid talking about his mom battling cancer and stuff. It struck him. And it's just something about that. You it it takes away what the virtual signaling and what and an actor has to do and you get to see john like that person yeah. in the moment kind of thing and john cena really did value kids and when you see how he approaches kids who are like big fans of him that was that's the thing it's kind of the same thing with the rock i i'm kind of up and down with the rock it's he really like that's the thing it's like men if there's a kid who's like, I really look up to you, man, own it. Because that means a lot. I had a kid that knew um, my what brother. What? Go ahead. Or I, I, I knew, it's not yours. Does it matter if it's not yours? Yeah, it doesn't matter. It could be any kid. And that, there was a kid that I knew that um, from my, my brother and I went to uh, my nephew's birthday one year and this kid, I had a beard. He's like, Oh my gosh, I, you have a beard. I look up to you. 
And I talked to his dad. He's like, he looks up to guys who have beards. And it's just, there's something that clicks. That's like, wow. It's, there's a kid who really looks up to you. That's the thing. It's like, men, we don't get that a lot. Mm. Like, when you're a dad, you kind of, I, I imagine when you're a dad, you kind of get that a little bit. But when you're not a dad, and then there's a kid who's like, I look up to you because of what you do. It's kind of cool. It's not to make me look any better than anyone else. It's like I had a beard at the moment. Like I still do, but I have a longer beard. And it's like, I think that's cool. And I'm like, dude, that's awesome. Like it's just something that clicks. It's like, wow, that's cool. There's there's kids that look up to us. Mm-hmm. And how we how we determine how we're gonna approach that. Like John Cena, he's he understands. He's like, you know what? I have love for kids, and I want to make my character in pro wrestling cool for the kids. Do you know and he holds I, the record for most Make a Wishes, and of any actor? Yeah, oh, because yeah. hmm. he loves doing that. He likes to give these kids who have the thing. He he always he never says no. That yeah, I remember hearing that. Like yeah, but I mean, would you? ever say no if you were in that position well that's the thing i know he's so requested well, though, would you yeah. say no canadian spider-man i never say no yeah if there let's never. say this let's say this right now if there's a kid who's makes a do a make a wish and he's like i want to meet the whole cast of manorama like are we all gonna say no no of course not. no I don't, I wouldn't no, know. we're gonna do. You know what we would do? We would do a live show with that kid in there to make his day. Nice. I've At heard the tale of some range with Tyron <laughs> Lethbridge. I've heard tale of some yeah. big name actors that have said no. I don't know any names, but I've heard some that have. Yeah, I, yeah, I've heard of some. No, one hundred percent. No. I, I just think that what John Cena does with Make a Wish awesome. is yeah. he wants to make the kid feel special and he's very humble about it whether i agree with him or not on political or virtual signaling or whatnot he has a heart for kids and i think that's really important i think men have to the amount of we'll do an episode where we talk about men dealing with a lot of things because society doesn't go for men is when Men have a heart for something, and especially with kids, it it goes a long ways. It does. They're the future, mm-hmm. man. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yes. Well, there's the whole patriarchy. What's that? <laughs> What's the patriarchy? All, all of society <laughs> is geared towards men, didn't you? What does that even? Oh mean? yeah, yeah. Supposedly, yeah, yeah, yeah. What are, what are you talking about? Like, I don't have a kid of my own, but I have my nephew, and I love him. And he looks yeah. up, you know, and it's like, yeah. So. Nope, never mind. You, yeah, you said that society isn't really geared towards men, but some people would argue that the whole page. It's the opposite. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what are you talking about? It was about, an offhand man? comment that you made. It's probably, no, it's all right. Uh, here's, a, here's a question. I have to do this with one eye because I don't have my glasses right now. Uh, Rager Steve, what kind of man did you think you will become? That kind of thing for a topic. Ooh, oh, because I put that in there. <coughs> Interesting. Oh, that's a really good question. Like John Wayne or Clint Eastwood or yeah, I okay. Before we end the show, because I like this man, I I do. I wanted to do an off the cuff kind of show. It changed a little bit. <clears throat> For me, it was Stallone. That was yeah. the kind of man. Um, he's yeah. very – he doesn't talk about religion as much. I know where he stands on religion. Um, it's – he values what a man is, and I think that's important. Mm-hmm. I think – It kind of seeps through him, through his art, but he doesn't – Yes. Doesn't blow – doesn't take a – horn and blow it out and like hey everybody this that this. No. exactly and i and i think the of, reason why he what oh, i was just gonna say and that's part of being a man is keeping it to yourself yeah 
I think being a man is there's some things you keep to yourself, but if you reach out to other guys, like I can go to Andy and Gary Ambrosia and be like, hey, I'm dealing with this. They can call me out on a lot of things, which they have. They're like, hey, look, this and that. I'm like, all right, that's cool. It's, I think Stallone is a good role model to follow and learn from because Mm -hmm. he's humble about it. It's, he's come from, if you haven't watched the Netflix um, special, I think it's just, I think it's just one documentary. Like still, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, he had three episodes. I was like, all right, that's a little bit arrogant. You punk <laughs> but alone he's like you understand if you watch rocky and rambo you understand stallone and to me that's who i look up to it's stallone and i told stallone i was like look i've dealt with depression and i've watched rambo and i've gotten out of depression because watching your stuff and and i got what? his what do you yeah. mean you told stallone well yeah. back the fucking truck up <laughs> what I, do you mean you told Stallone? Yeah, I'm curious I too. D- <laughs> I DM'd like him on Frank Instagram. Stallone? No, not I was gonna Frank say Stallone. probably oh, just man. put it on a brand. Yeah, Instagram post. Instagram post. And because if yeah. I talk to Frank, he'd be like, let's have some wine. Which <laughs> here's the other thing. Have you seen Frank Stallone and actual Sylvester Stallone? They've all aged the same way eventually. But I told I told Stallone, <laughs> Sly, um, in a DM on Instagram, I was like, "Look, I've dealt I've dealt with depression for a few years, and I've been watching Rambo, and I'm getting out of depression because of what nice. you do, and I appreciate what you do." And I his PR whoever it was said thank you very much and blah 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 whatever the PR had to say, but. Just letting that out, letting someone else know, like, hey, look, I've dealt with this. Thank you for what you do. Whether it be any type of job, like, it it, it feels like a stress gone. And to me, Stallone is who I look up to a little with bit. With that, Steve, can I ask you one quick, which is your sure. favorite Rambo film? Ooh, you, look up, <laughs> you look up to a lot of guys, same as me. Oh, damn. Oh, me, it's first blood. First blood to me is such a brilliant film. It's so good. Oh yeah, just I. Oh. It's a great Christmas uh, movie too. <laughs> it is. Yeah. I would say I would say yeah. I would say the fifth Rambo. The newer one that that was violent. Heck, they really went all out in the newer one. Oh my dear, I loved it because because right. of how he. Yeah, I would say the fifth one. Hmm. I like the last one that they did. I liked it, but I think the see the first first blood, that's the one that everyone thinks like, oh, this and that. He has a great monologue and great speech. That one, it's a little too hard for me. I'm like, oof. But I think with the uh the fifth one, it's more of how to deal with depression and everything. And yeah. But on that note. What Is that the one that ends with him walking down his dad's gate? Yes. Oh, okay. But on that note, I want to thank everyone. Andy, Jeff, I know that they had to leave early. Canadian Spider-Man, Rod, Tom, thank you for joining. This has been you, fun. Um, I don't know what you. the next topic <laughs> is going to be. Uh, as Canadian Spider-Man starts drinking out of a gas tank. Um, yeah. Um, I, bring, I just want to uh, uh, bring one thing yeah. up first, or, or just quickly, and it was re- car related actually, and uh, should have spoke up around, around the electric car thing. But uh, yeah, no, I, we're being forced force fed the electric car, and then the other thing is is that very few people know this. And I told this to Canadian Spider Man the other night, and that is that uh, a few people know this. I think uh, I believe Jay Leno knows though. I mean, well, no, I know he does. Uh, and that is that Hen- Henry Ford meant for the Model T to be operated on uh, canola oil. Well, or sorry, um, yes. but, canola, but um, uh, hemp oil. 
Mm. You know, yes. and like the fuel of the future in Ford's mind was supposed to be harvested off. And then plus the that also puts the power back into the regular American farmer, you know, and, you, grow your own hemp, you know, yeah. but yeah, because then you can grow your own hemp and then you turn on the sell, uh, sell it for uh, a price and then like, they're able to process it and then make it into uh, ma uh, make it into hemp, uh, hemp fuel. Plus, the other thing, too, is. Uh, oh, Spider-Man knew this. Um, Sp <laughs> um, Mythbusters proved that diesel trucks, a plain old regular everyday diesel truck, can run on used French fry oil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Which, I knew yeah. a girl like that once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thanks for this one. But yeah, but, no, anyway, um, that's all the stuff I want to say. They want to take control Henry, from people. That's why they don't want that. Yeah, yeah. It's the, exactly. Yeah. I mean, Henry Ford actually pushed like until until it was uh, actually outlawed. Uh, no thanks to, by the way. Um, well, what's that? Uh, uh, they're 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 French. Um, um, Dupont. Dupont mm. actually lobbied for hemp to be uh, to be outlawed, and the whole reason mm -hmm. why was because. Um, hemp uh plastics and jeans and you know was was moving in on the uh oil processing of uh oil petroleum processing into plastics so Fabulous. there's a historical yeah. historical fact to, uh, to keep in mind people yeah hemp mm -hmm. cloth is stronger than regular cloth. it's very strong too it is it is yeah. more durable yeah, do you, do you want to do a political chat on this sometime like you should open hey, up another some... wing and do political, right? There's a oh, political the hemp conversation that can go far. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I'll I'll I just wanted you want to hear. And it's not just because of owner stuff and all that. There's so much tied into it, like the oils, the fabrics. Yeah. The, uh, Robert Smith out of Halifax actually uses it for to cure some cancers. So he the hemp oils. Exactly. Exactly. Proven. Yeah. Yeah. So, Canadian you know, Spider-Man, how how political do you want to get? <clears throat> oh, um, it, as long as everyone is, um, you know, parliamentary language rules. Right. Of parliament, <laughs> as long as everyone is is respectful of each other, yeah, you can say whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> All right. Absolutely. Hundred cool. percent. All right. But yeah, as long as long as yeah, as long as this it's a salient as you're making salient points and being respectful, hundred percent. Everything I might do that. I will I do I thank Rod for what you said at the end. That was pretty cool. I didn't know much of that. That's pretty cool. I learned something new. Thanks. See? I'll send the I'll post the thing on twitter actually uh though uh, there it's it's only about a two minute video but yeah. all right yeah post it and then we'll share it um yeah. there is a poll on not rank or steve uh who has the most manliest beard i haven't looked at it yet um i don't know who's gonna win last in the check you were in the lead so <laughs> i was I was yeah <laughs> okay uh I'm that's new i just mama. put me i only put me in there just for fun yeah you're at 54.5 percent you're still in the lead so. what <laughs> yeah uh, are women allowed to be in the poll jake gyllenhaal second women? with 18 percent. so you might win it good sir it sounds what? pretty sexist <laughs> wait is there only <laughs> men in this poll that's fucking yes. sexist <laughs> no it's not uh it's only sexist if you think it is. But I want to thank everyone who is on the panel. Tom, Rod, Steve, Andy, right and Jeff. Thank you very much. This has been a fun, off-the-cuff kind of episode. Uh, longest just, ever. It's been raw, it, but it's the way it's been. It's, it's up there as one yep. of the longest. Um, I don't know what next week's episode is going to be, but if you want to know... You can just go to Twitter or X, uh, not Rank or Steve, and I'll have those up during the weekend so you guys know. I, yeah. Uh, usually the poll, I do it for three days for the poll. Go check it out. Do the poll. <coughs> vote, whatever. I know Baby sure. Jesus is in yeah. there. 
in the comments that should have been voted. Um, but yeah, we'll this has that. been fun. I know starting next month, there's a new podcast slash show called Men of God, where some of us that aren't on Manorama that might come on and we talk about passages in the Bible and we talk about that stuff. That's been kind of something that's been on my heart to do. And yeah, uh, this weekend I'm not doing a Lego build just because I have a men's conference for my church and I won't have time to actually do a Lego build. So that's not going to happen. Hopefully next week and will as I talk slow. Uh, <laughs> on that note, thank you everyone. This has been fun. Uh, you guys have been blessed. I will see you guys next Hi. weekend. And yes. On that note, ciao. Peace. Take care, guys. Mm -hmm.